looks like we're live. Testing the audio levels. Hello, testing. One, two. All right, let's dial that down a bit. Hey, hi everyone. Hey, Delta Zero, good to see you. Chinoze, good to see you. All right, today we will just be hanging out and I'll be very quickly trying to finish up some monsters. So I'm just preparing a video and I'm in the process of uploading it, but I've uh, had to shuffle around our uh, release schedule a little bit here. So, what's going on? Uh, you streaming from the woods? No, I'd love to. Um, I'm actually going to be um, spending more time outdoors now that I've finished the 3DS and the Wii U rush. Um, I've spent the past few years just staring at a computer screen and I'm not feeling great about it, so I'll be spending more time outdoors now which I'm very much looking forward to, and I'll, I'll probably be making, be making more videos and probably stream. I'll probably stream from a camping trip, stream from, from some campfires out in the woods somewhere. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, good to see you guys. What uh, I'm working on is uh, I had previously announced I would be bringing uh, Gaiden, the cancelled Wii U game, I'll be bringing that to the Switch and Galaxy Bound Curse DX, but the problem is I'm probably going to need a couple months for each of those games, and I uh, have to get a game launched onto the Switch to bring revenue into the studio so I can keep the studio afloat. So I have to uh, work on a game uh, that I can finish within about three weeks and then have that launch. Envy, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. So, um... I haven't made public the video yet that makes the announcement, but I just wanted to share with you guys um, that the next game that's launching on the Switch is called... It's an unannounced title, so this is the very first time uh, anyone's heard of it, and it will be Silver Falls Face Takers. So you may have heard of the cryptids, the Face Takers, from playing the, the games in the series. You'll, you know, Slim talks about Face Takers, sometimes they're called Face Stealers. Um, different characters will tell different stories about this, you know, supposedly made-up thing. And so I uh, will be working on that, and that's something that I actually can finish within about three weeks. If I if I do the 130 hours a week thing, I should be able to get it finished in three weeks, and then um, I can start launching that on the Switch. And again, I, I had to push this one. I wasn't going to do Face Takers for years, you know, I was going to leave that um, sitting. Um, but I have to get a game launched. Uh, because the Wii U and 3DS shops are closed. So I hope you guys look forward to Face Takers. I'll tell you a bit more about it when I start the, the sculpt. So I have a few, uh, there's a few, there's more than one Face Taker creature, cryptid. So, hey, uh, in case um, you hadn't seen that yet, we now are shipping out our uh, Silver Falls merchandise. So uh, I just got my Maverick Demon mug, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. And I've got something here. I was going to wear the hoodie, but I realized it would be very difficult to show you what that looks like on stream. So I'll just show you the hoodie here. And it's it's very comfortable. I'm, I'm very happy with how this turned out. So this is my proof. Uh, I have to order proofs of uh, the items so I can make sure that they're acceptable quality. So it's... I think it, it, it turned out looking great. Uh, the production is, is, is really, it's 100% what I wanted in terms of the manufacturing and production quality. Uh, the hoodie itself is actually quite warm. It's, this is nice. Um, it's, not, it's not thin. Uh, it's got some substance to the material. Uh, it's a metal zipper. It's got a bit of shine to it. You have your pull string here. Uh, it's a very comfortable fit. Um, I'm, I'm a normal sized guy. Uh, I ordered the large. So this is large. I'm normal size. I think I'm five, six something. I, I don't check my height. It's not important. Um, I'm normal build. I'm not, you know, I'm not Chris Redfield. So large is, is quite comfortable for me. It's, it's, um, I'd say if I went with a medium, it would probably be too tight. It would probably be uncomfortable for me. Um, so uh, I went with large, and I'm I'm very happy with how this turned out. So I'll 
I'll share it again later on the stream if, if anyone joins in later and then um, hasn't seen it yet. We got some spider webs. I was I was filming outside uh, and I got some spider webs on me. But there we are. Keep yourself alive. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and it, it just looks great. The printing quality is fantastic. And the hoodie itself is very comfortable. So I, I don't generally wear hoodies. I, well, I never wear hoodies. Uh, but I will be wearing this one. And I, I will be ordering the, the bomber jacket uh, from the website that is uh, much closer to Holt's actual uh, design of his jacket. Uh, and so hopefully that goes well. And I'm, I'm looking forward to wearing that bomber jacket from Holt. Ram A91, thanks. Hey, good to see you. Um, you're thinking about getting a Keep Yourself Alive jacket. Um, thanks, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to organize a sale for next month. So next month, I'll be adding a couple more items to the shop. I'm just waiting for my baseball cap to be delivered. I need to proof that to make sure that the embroidering is correct on the caps. So uh, probably the first week of next month, I'll start selling the caps. And um, I think next month I'll try to put the jackets on sale. So the hoodies and the jackets um, next month. So if you were looking for a Keep Yourself Alive jacket or hoodie, I'll put them on sale the first week of next month if I can organize that. So yeah, thanks for checking out the shop, everyone. Um, and I, I wanted um, I, I wanted the shop to be fun, even if you're not um, even if you're not uh, purchasing anything. If you just want to have a look at the shop, uh, I tried to make all the item descriptions fun. So yeah, even if you're not um, looking to buy anything, please feel free to check out the shop uh, and just go through all the items because I I, I spent some time writing the, the de descriptions and text so they're fun to read. <laughs> so uh, feel free to have some entertainment at the Silver Falls shop. Hey Barry, good to see you. Envy, uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out on the stream. <laughs> uh, Darrell launching so much games for the Switch, I wish I had one. Well Envy, I'm working on Silver Falls face takers for the Switch now. And if I speed through it, I should be able to have it done within three weeks. So uh, today we are doing the code linker for Karn. So Karn Delance, we distributed him for the other games, but now uh, this is the code linker for White uh, Inside Its Umbra. So if you have White Inside Its Umbra, go ahead and put your code linker. Uh, Ram, A, uh, Ram A, the beer glass is the best. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I've actually, um, I need to order I want the, the big cock classic beer uh, mug. I want to get those for some friends as well. I haven't put it in order yet. I'm just waiting for my other items to come through. So I'll just open up my uh, key tool here. All right, Barry, I'll get your code. So yeah, we're doing code linker today. Whoa, um, YouTube YouTube stream is crazy. It says I've got negative one concurrent viewers. That's wild. <laughs> oh no. I must be doing really, really poorly on the stream if I've got negative one viewers. Okay, so Barry, I'm, we'll, we'll just do the code linker all day long here. Uh, so yeah, if you've got uh, white inside its umbra, go ahead and put your uh, code in there. And I will get you your unlock code. All right, Gino, say, and Barry, row the salmon ghost viewers. Well, it's... <laughs> that's creepy. Are you saying if a ghost enters uh, the stream then it's they they subtract because they're already dead so they're not like a living person so it it adds a negative number all right this is for barry and gino's a and this is for white inside its umbra okay t t r s c yeah, p t r s c C X L Q T. Envy. Oh right. Uh, so what, what I what I meant by that post uh, was uh, I had I had launched uh, Wii U and the final uh, Wii U and 3DS games. That's that's what launched meant. And I'm still finishing up uh, Duck Season, but I I will launch Duck Season. I'll try to line that up close to uh, when um, Face Takers launches. And again, I'm, I'm trying to finish take Face Takers within three weeks, uh, and then Duck Season will will come pretty close to that. Okay, oops, hold on, I've already, I've already, I was just fiddling, I was just fiddling with the, the drawing there. Okay, 
here we are. Let's go. Let's get started here. So there's more than one. There's more than one face taker, isn't there? All right. I'll move that across. This is going to be face taker two. Face taker two. Oops, that's in caps. Face taker. Hey, winter player. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out on the stream. So what I'm doing today is creating some monsters for Silver Falls face takers. So I'll tell you guys a little bit more about face takers now. So I've had to delay. I've pushed back Galaxy Bound Curse and um, uh, Gaiden for Switch. I pushed those back a bit because they're going to take a couple months to finish. And um, I don't want to rush those games. I want those games to be just right. I had to rush the previous six releases. I had to rush those like crazy because the eShop for Wii U and 3DS was closing. Uh, and I don't want to rush any more games. That is the last time I will be rushing. Um, well, this will be the last time I'm rushing the game. <laughs> there we go. That, that's, that's a bit more accurate. Let's play something a bit more relaxing here. We're playing Disturbance in the Water. That's the Ruby River music. Uh, I'll bring this music up. What is this? Is this the daytime music? Winter player. All right. So I'm making some monsters called Face Takers. Uh, and if you've played some of the other Silver Falls games, you might be familiar with the concept. Characters have um, told stories about face face takers. They, they talk about it like it's a campfire story, like it's a fun, a fun little little creature. But we're going to see what they're like in in this upcoming game. Bonnie in FNAF has no face. The face takers, in theory, take faces. Silver Falls is canon in FNAF timeline. Uh, I, I don't know anything about FNAF. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've seen the merch at our game shop in town. And I, I played the first one for about, um, I'd say a good 10 minutes with a buddy of mine when the first FNAF came out. I played it for about 10 minutes, and um, yeah, my friend and I had a jump scare, but that was because it was a very loud sound. So um, I don't know anything about FNAF. I don't know anything about the lore or, or the monsters. I know that Freddy Funbear is the main character of FNAF, and um, he's like the Chucky of Chuck E. Cheese, and everyone loves Freddy Funbear, um, but he's... Oh, I want to say Freddy Funbear is actually a ghost? And he died 40 years ago, and so the security guard is like, Wait, Freddy Funbear's been dead for 40 years. Um, that's... That's the story of FNAF, I think. <laughs> Bro, uh, lots of very upsetting mouth shapes last time. Oh yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't do Code Linker last time. I didn't have anything prepared, but today we're doing Karn Delance. Did I? How correct was I? Did I get Freddy Funbear right? Gino Zay, that is one hundred percent the story of FNAF. Ah, oh, thanks. Well, I guess I do know FNAF then. Cool. Good for me. So the next time my 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 kid nephew asks me to to um, talk about FNAF with him, I'll know what to say. Okay, so here's... Okay, this guy's gonna be, um... Okay, this guy's a big, big boy. But here's the thing, right? Even if you're a big, like, a big old chunky blob, you have to have shape. You know what I mean? So this guy's gonna be a big old, big old chunky. Um, but it, it needs to be, like, heavier at the bottom and then lighter, uh, thinner at the top. Because, you know, how mass um, works is, you know, it, it, there's, it's gotta have weight to it. So he's gotta be a bit chunkier around the bottom. He's gotta have, like, muffinitis. You know what I mean? And I'll just um, have a sip of coffee for my Mavic Demus mode. Now available from the Sun Grand shop. Actually, yeah, you can. You can grab this from our shop. Um, I think it's like 10, 11 bucks or something like that. Uh, and shipping varies depending on where you are in the world. But I try to make them as cheap as possible. So 
Yeah, you can get yourself a Maverick D Moose mug as well. Hey, Brian, good to see you. I'll get your code linker now for a uh, white inside its umbra. Okay, this is for Brian. This, this, this guy um, today that we're working on will also have a mouth, so I hope you enjoy that. I'm going to start on the mouth now, actually. I'm just doing Brian's code linker. Philippe, uh, yeah, good to see you on the stream. Thanks for hanging out. If I didn't say hi earlier, uh, P-H-Y-D-X. Cool. Winterplay, this is Sculptress. You can download Sculptress for free, and you can use it for free 100%. So, uh, I recommend it. It's very fun to use. I use a drawing tablet with it because the drawing tablet has pressure sensitivity. Y-K-S-J-U. So yeah, um, Winterplay. This is called Sculptress. If you have a look in the corner of this... I can't point that far. Uh, look in the top corner. You can see how to spell it there. Download it free. 100% free. Oh, oh crap. Uh-oh. That's not what I wanted. Zoomed in without me. Okay, so I think this is my butt side. I'm going to call that the butt side. And I think this is the front side. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the front side. So what I'm going to do with, with this particular face taker, because there's more than one, this face taker is actually going to wear a human face stretched across the front. So it's just going to be a flat skin stretched. And so he needs to have little appendages that come out the sides. And it's going to be like pinning down the edges of the skin. Uh, so there'll be little little tiny arms coming out, grabbing the skin, holding the face in place. So this guy's not a very good face wearer, uh, because it's not going to be very convincing that um, it's a real face. So I want his big old yummy mouth to be about here. So I'm I just need to mark out. Ooh, ooh, I need to mark out where his yummy mouth will be. I'm gonna lower the strength a bit. So his yummy yummy mouth will be around here. So you see the reason why I really like uh, to use... Okay, I need to make sure it's facing real downwards. So I use a, a Wacom Intuos 4. It has the control wheel, which is really nice. You can use the wheel uh, for whatever functions. I, I like to have it on zooming in and out. Uh, and it has pressure sensitivity. I use two different stylus with different tips and different settings. Uh, this is set to be less sensitive. It's got a felt tip. Uh, so that it moves slower, there's more friction, then I have a plastic tip uh, with uh, higher sensitivity so I can uh, work faster. So I use this stylus for precision work, and as you can see, I can um, very finely uh, make adjustments uh, because it is pressure sensitive. So this is my, this is my favorite way to sculpt. Uh, I refuse to sculpt any other way. This is it for me. Okay, so I just need to make sure that the chompy mouth is real good. So I don't think the chompy mouth is big enough yet. I want it, I want it really... Here's the thing, right? If it, the chompy mouth is below, it's, I think it's kind of upsetting, because then it means it has to sit on top of you to get its chompy going. So uh, that's, that's why I've, I'm, I'm doing that. Put the chompy mouth down here. And he's got to have real kissable lips. You know what I'm saying? Real kissable lips. So, we're going to grab this guy. I'm going to... Got to monitor my audio levels here. Moisturize me. Uh, a dream pellet. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out on the stream. So, we're going to make this boy real kissable here. He's going to be just the most kissable, kissable gentleman. Uh, and he's got to have... I might stick some human teeth down there. That's what I'm thinking, you know? I have human teeth on the other models that I did, so I might just borrow those human teeth. And I think I'm just going to jam them, jam them all up in there. Okay. I'm using the grab tool now. So I'll explain to you what Face Takers is about, okay? Uh, uh, Zillion, hey, thanks for uh, coming to say hello. It's good to see you. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> um, hey, hey, thanks for, thanks for coming by. Um, uh, good to see you. Yeah, actually, I, I just got this tie. I just found this. Um, I uh, just picked it up in a shop. I thought it was quite nice. It's got this, um, really like this sort of a textured, uh, pattern to it. It catches the light in just, just the right way it is textured. It's, um, it's quite a nice tie. I, I do like the tie here. Admittedly, I don't think this, this, uh, vest, uh, I have to sit sort of bunched up here. Uh, in my in my workstation, so I'm not sure if this it's actually a longer vest, so it doesn't really 
doesn't really like me sitting all crunched up here. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is a, a standing man's vest, as it were. Okay, so that's enough. I just need to uh, paint. So later on, I'll paint that. I'll paint the inside of this mouth hole so that um, it is uh, black and doesn't reflect any light. So that way, um, it will uh, look like it just goes upwards infinitely. So this is already like... I'm already not liking this. So what we're going to do now, what we're going to do is just add some legs so you can understand what this what this what this fun boy is all about. Give it vampire teeth. I'm going to give it human teeth uh, because I think if it looks if it looks like human teeth, it's going to be very unpleasant to look at. Uh, 3D scan your teeth and import them into the model. I have been looking for a good app uh, to do photo scanning and whatnot. All right, so we're going to give him... I'm just looking... Yep, okay. Here we go. we got to make sure he has real chunky front thighs. These, these are his front thighs here. Okay, we're going to build that up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And we're going to make sure we have the musculature so that this makes sense. Yeah, okay. So the musculature looks like it may... I'm going to have some muscles coming up the front as well. Okay, cool. All right. Let's get some thick thighs on this fellow. Thick, thick thighs. Welcome to the Face Stealer stream. Howdy. Do you prefer sculptures over uh, Blender sculpting? Love how it's coming along. Thanks. I haven't used Blender that much, and the reason why I have difficulty uh, with Blender is it uses different uh, shortcuts for um changing the various tools like um i have i have so much muscle memory for the way maya works in terms of the shortcuts and i think it's basically the same shortcuts um for manipulating tools in unity as well so uh at some point um i will just sit down and i'll spend a couple of weeks just learning blender um but i've i've liked what i've worked with in blender before but um, when I tried to use it, all the shortcut keys were too different for me. Uh, and it, I wasn't able to fit it in my workflow. Uh, but I, I will be learning um, Blender in the future. So I, I just really like uh, working in sculptures. I really like the simplicity. Um, it doesn't do too much to help. It does just enough. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking I, I may have gone out a little too far here. So I'm just going to bring it back. I'm going to bring it on back. Bring it on back. Go. Bring it on back. That's it. See, the thing is, when you have a chunky boy, if you give him long limbs, it's incongruous with being chunky. Chunky things should have like sort of short, nubby limbs to help communicate a sense of fatness um, or chunkiness, as it were. Okay. So these are for these legs were made for walking. So go ahead and build this out. And there we go. Okay, there we go. And he's not, he's not gonna, okay, I, I know how, his, how I want his hands to look, so I'll work on that. I got an errant, um, errant stroke there in the back, okay. So I will work on his hands in a bit. They're gonna, they're gonna be like fingers that start up here, and then they, they're kind of clubbed, and then they, they drop down. You, you'll see it, you'll see it. Hey, uh, Chris Davis, good to see you. I'll do your code linker now. Okay, so if you're new to the stream, welcome. Thanks for coming to hang out. And what we're working on today is we're sculpting monsters for Silver Falls uh, face takers. Uh, and we're doing some code linker content. So we're giving out Karn Delance for White Inside its Umbra. And again, there's a um, an update patch coming to White Inside its Umbra to fix uh, the glitches. And uh, there will be 45 new uh, stages available for Frontier Hunters. Okay, here we go. Spooder legs, yeah. Uh, you're just in time, Chris Davis. Let me get your code here. Okay, we have E Y Q E Y Q G V. All right, Chris. B C K M S. All right, there we go, and that will get you Carn Delance for uh, White Inside its Umbra. So this is, this is a big, big boy. This is going to be uh, significantly taller than the player character. I think the player's, the player's height will generally be around here. 
So this is going to be a big board. I want to do something... I just want the, the back legs to be a little unexpected. Um, you know, you kind of expect them to look like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do something a little different here. And again, you need to build up the mass so it looks like the muscles are attached to the limb to a degree here. Alright. There we go. So that makes it that makes it look like it has uh, muscle to support the limb itself. There we go. There's our good boy. Oh, yeah. Ugh, it's unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, Ro, hey, cool. Um, Rashad Z, uh, hey, good to see you. Thanks for hanging out on the stream. If I may ask, how do you come up with the titles for your Silver Falls games? So, um, usually... If it's a game that's signature, a signature game for a console, then I'll use the acronym of the console. So, a uh, white inside its umbra is Wii U. Uh, Row the salmon. I'm doing your code linker now. And three down stars is um, the 3DS. And uh, for uh, the Game Boy Color, it's Galaxy Bound Curse. So the idea is to I know roughly what I want the game to be, uh, in terms of the concept, what makes that game unique. Um, and the idea, the difficulty is coming up with an acronym to match. But then also, it has to match the concept of the game. And with White Inside Its Umbra, um, that was tough, because I, I knew what I wanted the game loop to be, and I didn't want to... Um, um, I didn't want to deviate from from the concept, like what makes White Inside Its Umbra unique. I didn't want to deviate from the concept, so I coming up with the title with that one was was a major relief that I was able to think of something. Um, so that was tough, yeah. Oh man, here we go, here we go. We're gonna go. Let's go. There we go. He's gonna... Oh god. Ugh. Hold on. Yeah. And in, in sometimes I'll um, uh, name it after a place, such as Ruby River. Um, there, are, there are games... And that's where, um, if the location is important, and the location is the core uh, appeal of the game, then I'll name it after the uh, location. So, for example, Ruby River. It's important that that's called Ruby River. I hate what I'm doing here. I hate this. I hate what I'm doing. I don't like this at all. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, what have I done? Oh. Oh. Hey, guys, what if I gave it, like, an, another, like, another little toe here? Like, another little, another little guy coming out the back. Oh, I hate it. Oh. Oh. I don't like this at all. What have I done? Going all too hard on it. I don't like it. Well, that's just how it is now. Oh, I don't like it. Dot com. Hey, good to see you, everyone. Awesome. The code links work. Um, hey, do you? Do a re-topology pass? If so, how long does that typically uh, take? So I I do... Um, Sculptors has an automated topology thing in it, um, but it's it's irreversible once you start painting it. It it, it automatically builds the thing, um, so I don't ha uh, have to do any extra work. And the reason why I really liked, like that system is because I used to do all of this work in Maya, and Godspeed, because sometimes I could spend a week um, on all of that, on all that process, you know, assigning, um, um, basically building and customizing, optimizing a UV map, and it uh, is a nightmare. It was my, absolutely my least favorite part. Um, rigging, I really, 
don't enjoy rigging. It's quite a miserable process. Uh, part of that has to do with because um, Maya is, is a little bit dodgy and it ten tends to like um, delete and ignore a significant amounts of your work uh, when it comes to um, rigging. And yeah, building UV maps, I'm just, I don't enjoy it. How kissable do you think this is so far? Do you like how kissable this is? I want it to look a little swollen down here. That's what I'm thinking. Does that look kissable enough to you guys? Give it Trex feet. What's Trex feet? T-Rex? Is that what you mean? Oh no, they're always a welcome addition. Hey, Kilfay, what's up? Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for coming around. Okay, so that looks... I'll stop when you guys say this is kissable enough, because I I need to make sure this boy's real good at kissing. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Montenegro, hey, good to see you. Thanks for coming around. If, is this kissable enough yet? I'm not. I can't stop until somebody says it's kissable enough. <laughs> Homie needs some chapstick. Um. Yeah, I gotta make sure this is not a nice color. Oh, maybe it's a little too kiss. It looks pretty kissable to me. More kissable. Why are you doing this to us, Gina Zay? Why? This is your fault. You did this. I'll use the inflate tool now. Is it kissable enough yet? That's that's getting extra kissable now. I'm I'm thinking that's pretty kiss. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, so this thing, this thing is going to be pretty big. The, the player's face is, is their head height is going to be about there. So this is a real, real big boy. That's nice and plump. Yep, good for kissing. I'm going to stick some human teeth in there. Just a couple. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. So he's going to have some of... He's going to have some of these things up here. It will suck my soul with those lips. Okay, so I'll tell you guys about uh, the game now. You'd need that under the bleachers. No thanks. I'm gonna pass on that. So, if you're new to the stream, I was explaining early on. Oh, and if you missed it, we are now shipping out. Uh, we've got our merch shipping out. So this is the Keep Yourself Alive hoodie. Get it there. It's actually really nice quality uh, manufacturing on the uh, graphic print. It looks great. I'm going to order the bomber jacket, which I actually only finished the other day. So I do have the brown bomber jacket that looks pretty close to what Holt has. Uh, it's polyester, it's not leather, but I'll be ordering that one as well. But this hoodie is, is really nice quality. It's actually quite warm, and I don't wear hoodies, but I will wear this one. So it's uh, nice, it's actually pretty thick, uh, good quality, uh, and it's got a metal zipper there as well. The uh, work on the seams, you can see they're quite good. Uh, I haven't detected any uh, manufacturing flaws on this. It's nice. It's really comfortable. Uh, and again, I ordered a large. I'm a normal sized guy. Um, I think if I were to order the medium, it would be too tight for me. I think it would be a little, a little uncomfortable. This is a large and it fits me quite comfortably. So I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. And of course we have our Maverick to new smugs. I might go ahead and load up a couple more tracks. I'm going to grab some more tracks later on. Okay, so let me explain to you what uh, Face Takers is all about. So I've already announced I'd be working on Gaiden, which is the Wii U game. I'm, I'm porting that to the Switch. Um, but uh, that's going to take a couple months, and Galaxy Bound Curse is going to take a couple months, and I don't want to rush those games. I can't afford to rush Galaxy Bound Curse and Gaiden on the Switch. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a... Uh, I'm, I'm, I wasn't going to work on this game for a few years. Honestly, this was like a super distant plan. And I thought this will be a good one to bolster a bigger title, right? I want to launch bigger titles and then have smaller titles accompany them um, to, to add dynamic to the release. And also for Codelinker to make it fun. Um, but the deal is that... I need to launch a new game on the Switch as soon as possible. Um, because my games are no longer selling, the vast majority of Silver Falls games can no longer be purchased because they were on the uh, 3DS and Wii U, so I can't sell those anymore. So I gotta make sure it looks like there's knuckles coming off of this boy here. 
um, and not the Ugandan knuckles. I mean, like body knuckles, right? So you got like you got like this coming here, like that. Okay, like that. We good? We good like that? Okay, and then let's put a couple knuckles here. Uh, and so with face takers, this is something that I'm I'm hoping if I work 130 hours a week again, um, I think I should be able to finish this within three weeks, hopefully. Oh, hold on, I sort of messed up there a little bit. Right, so the idea of face takers is uh, face takers will use the abstraction engine, so it will play like Episode Prelude and Three Down Stars, but it's um, more combat focused. So there will be significant um, fine tuning and um, improvements to the battle system in the abstraction framework. And those are improvements that, again, um, why I'm working on this, I can carry those those improvements uh, back to the Three Down Stars um, remaster, the HD remaster and the update for Episode Prelude. Any fine tuning and, and improvements I make to the framework while working on Face Takers, I can bring those back to the other games as well. So that's why I'm working on this as well. So uh, how, hey, Kenneth, good to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out on the stream. So how Face Takers works, uh, the gameplay, is you start out in the daytime and you have a couple minutes to scavenge for supplies. So you pick a campsite and then you have to look for uh, health items, things that you might be able to um, use to craft um, items or, or weapons, health items. Um, if you can find any lost backpacks, you can get ammunition. And then eventually, uh, very you only have a couple minutes and then after that it will turn nighttime. And then once it turns nighttime, um, you uh, have to fight monsters. And every time you start a new game, or every time you start a game at all, you have a uh, randomized playable character. So the graphics on that character are randomized. Um, their stats and their abilities, any special abilities they have, and the items that they start out with are totally randomized. So it's going to feel fresh. It's every time you hop into the game, you're going to have a different character to play with, and you have to very quickly figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are, and then you have to fight um, and defeat as many enemies as possible. So if you can defeat the enemy wave, uh, you'll survive to the next morning. You'll get survivor points, and um, you will get to carry on and live into the next day. So you have to survive and, and fight and play and keep building up your resources, but eventually, uh, when you get killed, your character will be permanently dead. So that your character you're playing it as is gone forever. You're never going to get them back. But when you start um, after your character dies, you are given a new randomized character. So again, that character will have a randomized look to them. Again, randomized stats, randomized abilities, and randomized um, items to start out with. And so you have to start from scratch but you're not entirely starting from scratch. So let me explain. So when um, you start as a new, we'll, we'll call them campers, they are campers. So when you um, pick up from a dead camper and then you start as a new camper, uh, ooh, oh, that's unpleasant, okay. So you start as a new camper, you can actually go and find the body of your previous camper. And so that camper is now dead, but you can scavenge their body. So you will get a skill memento. So you'll get a memento of the character that died, and it will grant you a skill. So as long as you have that memento in your inventory, you'll get a skill. And if you're familiar with the skill system um, from Three Down Stars and Episode Prelude, that's how you um, obtain skills, because you have to look for the dead bodies of your previous campers. But that character would have been killed by face takers, so you can imagine it's not going to be a pretty sight, so I'm not going to spoil anything, but the game is called Face Takers, so um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I think you can imagine what's, what's going to happen when your campers get killed, and then you have to encounter enemies that killed your previous camper. I think you can imagine what's going to happen here. Um, so again, I don't want to spoil that. Uh, I'll let you enjoy that for yourself. Oh, this is a real muscly boy, isn't he? Yeah, let's turn off the wireframe. And so, um, you might be wondering, well, can you scavenge any weapons and items from your campers that get killed? So, there is a system called Safety Slot. So every time you successfully survive an enemy wave, you gain one 
uh, safety slot level. And that means that one item slot in your inventory is now a safety slot. So the item that is in that safety slot, when that camper dies, it will be sent back to your storage. So you won't lose that item. So you are rewarded for surviving as many uh, enemy waves as possible because you get to keep more of your items for your next character. Eventually it'll get so difficult the enemies just get stronger, so eventually you will die. But if you survived, say you survived five enemy waves, you survived five days, then five of your item slots will be safety slots, and those items will not be lost. So I would recommend putting your valuable stuff in there. If you have skill mementos or if you have very good weapons, put them in your safety slots so that when your camp camper dies, excuse me, when your camper dies, those items will be kept. And it's also a punishment for doing poorly, because if you don't survive any enemy waves, you'll have no safety slots, which means you'll lose all your items. Okay. Give it a vein. Oh yeah, we're gonna give this we're gonna give this boy plenty. He's gonna have he's gonna have some here. Here we'll we'll put some let's put one right here. There we go. How's that? Is that a good vein? Is that good for you? Ah, zoomed in. Oops, I was touching the zoom in. So that will be the gameplay of Silver Falls Face Takers. There won't be... Um, there won't be um, playable uh, characters from the other Silver Falls games. You won't play as any existing characters. You're only playing as campers. Okay. Uh, a dream pillet. Uh, what's a dream pillet? My coffee here. Uh, there was a hilarious Tumblr post, Tumblr post going around that's oddly difficult to find. References for Knuckles on Google's because everything that shows up is Knuckles the Echidna. Oh, Silver Falls Rogue like is real. <laughs> that flat. Uh, red mixed with the rough texture makes me think of a chili pepper. I do like chili peppers. Alorzo, hey, good to see you. Let me do your code linker now. So yeah, I hope you guys like the sound of Silver Falls Face Takers. Um, it's going to be easy to jump in and out of. If you enjoy this sort of how in Guardians and Metal Exterminators you can just jump in and out and you can just enjoy some gameplay, that is what uh, Face Takers um, will have in terms of appeal. It's, it's easy to just turn the game on and enjoy a few matches. Um, and again, the better you do, the more um, supplies you'll be able to save. Uh, and and um, you're, yeah, you're just trying to um, get the highest survival score, beat up some monsters, and again, you're going to be earning um, rewards and weapons by completing waves as well. Hey, Alorzo, V, K, P, V, I, P, K, P, V, I. Alorzo. Alorzo. Silver Falls, let it die. Well, you're dying. I mean, not you, but your character is dying. Uh, e N J T Z. There we go. And then the next one uh, will be Kenneth. So there will be uh, some story uh, as well after you finish. Um, well, when you're exploring during the daytime and sunset, you can find notes, and I'm trying to, um, I don't know if I'll have time, but I want to have geo signals as well. Geo signals from wide inside its umbra. Um, W-N-Y-D-Y. W-N-Y-D-Y, okay? So there, there will be some story. Um, you'll, you'll hear from familiar characters, but you don't necessarily get to interact um, with with Silver Falls characters that you are familiar with, but there is some story. There's events that you see that occur um, after you your character gets killed and you lose a character. It'll it'll play some story events. Oh, you're referring to the structure feeling like Let It Die. I don't know what Let It Die is. Can you tell me about it? Uh, imagine this concept with the meme maker facial features. That would be upsetting. Uh, and it's an excellent idea, Row the Salmon. Um, and I feel like that's a game that somebody should make. I think that would be really cool. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now, later on, I'm going to make him a little chunkier at the bottom. 
and a little thinner at top, so he looks like a real chunky boy. So I said he's going to have little appendages now, so I need to leave room for the face uh, to be there. So I need to have that be a different model. So I'm going to leave that there. What I'm going to do is just... Um, I, need his, I need little hands coming out of him uh, so they can grab the face and hold it in place. I'm just looking at that, and I, I'm thinking that's probably all right. Okay, so i got to um, make little arms that come out. So, uh, yeah. Um, and you'll be... The game takes place around uh, the, sh uh, the shore of a lake, and there will be different environments where you can pick as your camping spot. Um, so there will be a bit of a variety um, in terms of the environments, but no indoor areas, all outdoor. Um, I, I stopped paying attention. I, um, I was just busy talking. I need to step back here. Let's all just take a step back. Um, this is probably good here. Okay. Grab that. So, yeah, uh, I'm working on this project because I, I need to have something selling on the Switch very soon. Um, so it's not going to have Code Linker out, and there's a story reason why there's no code linker out. Um, there's only code linker in for this game. And I... Yeah. Okay. I need to really make it look like it's stretching here, so I'm going to keep grabbing and pulling here. Uh, and I need... I'm. See, I'm sort of, I'm sort of messing up my body. I should have frozen those. Um, I should have frozen those, but I didn't. It's, it's no big deal though. Um, it's no big deal because I'm still working on it. You can freeze a section of your model so it doesn't get modified. No big deal. You know, I'm not crying over it. Um, see, I can, I can rig these part of this part of his body and animate it as well. So let me go ahead and just fix up the body that I messed up a little bit. We're just gonna. Oops. that just so it matches the uh, density of the area around it there we go no big deal it's fine it's fine we're doing fine everyone we're okay we're all right all right you know what i think eventually i will need to freeze those so i can work on it properly no big deal right now though no big deal smoothen Oop, i didn't want that Pick the wrong tool there. There. Okay, we need to give this fellow little hands as well. Okay. Code didn't work. You might have done something wrong. Is it um, for White Inside its Umber, right? Alorzo? Uh, let me just make sure I've done yours correctly. Let's see. Alorzo. Make sure. I'm not sure if I did. I was talking at the same time, so I may have done it V, P, K, V, I. V, P, K, V, ah, V, K, P, V, K, P, V, I, generate. Um, e, N, J, T, Z. I'm, I'm getting the same code on, on that, Alorzo. Um, kind of... Gino say it kind of a souls like where you have bodies that are regenerated and you keep a stockpile of them. You you adventure out and fight as them, but can leave materials and equipment back in your base camp for. Um, I've never played souls like. Wait, what's it called? Dark uh, dark dark souls. I got it. I know what video games are. Um, I didn't get the chance to play that because I was busy working. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's go ahead and give this guy some nubs so he can hold on to his little face here. He's gonna have finger nubs. Um. All I know about Dark Souls is that it's hard? People say that it's a hard game. Uh, and that's all I know. Hey, the code worked for Kenneth. All right, awesome. Um, 
grow the salmon. It's oozing with presentation in spots, but can get grindy and definitely has a paywall problem. Oh, do you mean um, let it die? Paywalls. They really, they really ruin the fun, don't they? they? They can take a great concept and just ruin the whole thing. I don't know why I'm not freezing these. Where's the freeze tool? I forgot what the freeze tool is. Is it mask? I, I might mess this up here. Hold on. Nope, that's not it. All right, I'm going to ask the internet. <laughs> uh, sculptress, how to freeze. Um... I I don't I can't find it I can't find it right now. What is this tool? Whoa, I don't want that. I I knew it. I knew it at some point and now I don't. So, uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, I'll just keep working around it. No big deal everyone. Uh, no big deal. Not a problem. Okay, we're just gonna work like everything is normal, everything is fine, no big deal. No big deal, everyone, we're okay. He's gonna have little grabby hands, so this is what's gonna hold the faces in place. See, the closer you are, the, the more density you get out of it. Yeah, okay, we're good, we're good. No, we don't need the freeze tool, I don't even need it anyway. And of course I'll simplify these. Oh, wow, these nubs are not nice, are they? So these are his little mittens that he'll use to hold on to his face that he's taken. His little hand nuggets. Oh, Alorzo. Okay, I'll do your code again. Um... Warzo's code is VKPKI. All right, here we go. E N J Q Z. There we go. I call these my face clampers. Yeah. And me, Jarrell, the video game maker that doesn't play video games. I really, I really want to. <laughs> I have a massive backlog. Everyone's talking about all these games that they're enjoying. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, that's just the long and the short of it is I started my own video game company um, and I'm a solo developer. That just means that I have to put in heaps of hours. And oh, I hate this. Oh, I just realized what I've done. Oh. <laughs> Everyone, can we just look at this? Can we just enjoy this? Oh no! What have I done? Oh god, I hate it! Oh no, yeah, I mean I have to rig and animate those bad boys. And they're gonna they're gonna hold the face, the skin, so it's not gonna be a face shape. He's gonna hold the skin. So when you're when you have a character die, when you're playing uh Silverfall's face takers and your camper dies, one of the face takers is going to take your character's face and wear it. Uh, and this guy's gonna grab the face, just scratch it like that and wear it. Hey, it worked. All right, glad to hear it worked. Oh, why? What have I done? What have I done? Uh, Gino would say, so if one dies, their stockpile is left in the tower, but you can maintain a healthy set of gear for the new characters you keep in stock. Oh, interesting. Um, in an effort to evoke quarters being put into an arcade cabinet, you can use continues. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Uh, the merchant guy in Let It Die sounds like Mondo Zappa from Killer Is Dead, which was also Grasshopper Suda 51. Cool developers. Yeah, absolutely. There's no way to rebind controls in Let It Die. Oh, no. That sucks. Envy. Actually, uh, it's kind of good because he doesn't copy anything from anything. 
yeah, that's like an automatic safety mechanism. Um, because I'm not playing anything, it's it's impossible for me to copy anything by accident. Oh, I didn't want that, actually. Um, it is an actual skill. If, if you're someone who creates something, it is an actual skill that you have to spend time developing to not copy things. But you are obviously going to be inspired by things that you enjoy and things that you love. And you, in the exact same way that you have to practice actually doing Say you, you draw, uh, you paint. You have to spend time working on those skills, drawing and painting and improving those skills. You also have to spend time actively developing your ability to be inspired without copying uh, and without stealing, um, without you know blatantly just like um, reusing an idea or a concept that you like. It is an act actual skill and it's, it's very difficult um, to work on that skill, but it's important. And for some reason, for some people, they don't care. Um, especially like larger companies. Larger companies don't care. That's not their uh, objective and their priority. Their priority is to make money. And the best way to make money is to make something that's popular at the time. Oh, ew. Oh, I don't like that at all. Oh, I messed up. Uh, I'm No, I genuinely don't like that. That was genuinely kind of gross. Okay, so working from behind wasn't great. I'll just, I'll work from here. This is no big deal. This is fine. I'll fix that later. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm just... No. No, no. No, no, no. Just the size. Something, something like that. That's that's all right. Okay. Gotta draw his face clampers on there. All right. I'm just thinking about how far the face needs to stretch. You know. Uh, so that's what I'm considering right now, is facial stretch. How far do I go stretching a face, you know? How far does a man have to go to stretch his face? And I'm kind of thinking it needs to be higher than that. Okay, so I'm going to use my grab tool now. Oh, row the salmon. Um, it's a riskier proposition since PvP is an active component. Oh, I already. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm not a fan of of that. Of paying for an advantage and then it's um, PvP. Not a big fan of that. I'm fine. I'm fine. We're good. We're good. Don't worry. We're cool. We'll fix that later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's... Yeah. See, the bottom of the face is kind of like closer together. You know, it's it's narrower. It's thinner. Okay. So I'm thinking that's... I'm thinking that's going to be a good... Pretty good face... Face stretchiness there. Okay. So let's go ahead and fix up... Um, I kind of messed that up there. So I'm just going ahead and fix, fix that. So I'm going to have a separate model. Um, I'm going to be doing a separate model to hold the face, to clamp the face down uh, onto um, the body. So yeah, the face will be about there. What we're going to do now is we're going to do an optimization pass where I'm going to reduce the poly count where it matters. Okay? So we're looking pretty good. I'm, I'm actually just going to give him a couple more. I'll make some, some adjustments. So I want it to be chunkier at the bottom. Uh, so that it looks like there's mass. The mass is sinking down. Uh, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of muscular definition, and then I will be doing my optimization pass. So right now we are at 454,000 triangles. So this would run fine on a PS5, I think, because PS5 has infinite polygons. Is that what they promised us? Yeah. Okay, 
So, I'll try the inflate tool first and see how that works out for us. Um, that's not exactly what I wanted. No, I'll use my, my grab tool now. Grab tool. That's, that's pretty much what I wanted. There we go. Alright, so we want a sense of mass uh, accumulating at the bottom of the creature because he's a big chunky boy. Big beautiful chunk. There we go. That's it. That's our boy. That's our fella. Let's give him a little dumpy butt as well. Nice cute dumpy butt. We might round out his butt later on if I feel like it. We'll see. Okay, so we want that, we want that definition in there. We're just going to bring in, bring in the top a little bit to help communicate that sense of mass accumulating at the bottom. Drag that out a bit. We want him to look a little lumpier on, on the top. So there we go. Now this has the sense. Yeah, we go. You see how the shape has now changed to where it's narrower up the top? So now there is a sense of mass accumulating towards the bottom here. So let's go ahead, let's just appreciate him really quick. Let's turn off the wireframe. Oh, what a beautiful boy. What a beautiful boy you are. Yeah, you are. Okay, we're gonna smooth out the seam in the middle here. I'll turn our wireframe back on, just smoothing this out here. Let's just, let's just make him a little rounder down here. There we go. I want the muscles to make sense connected to the rear leg. So you know your glutes are attached to your... Your glutes give your legs power, you know, so... That's what my grandpappy used to tell me. Oh, hey! Let's do an unboxing! Hey, welcome to Sun Grand's unboxing channel, everybody. Welcome. I actually just got this delivered before, right before the stream started. Okay. You guys ready to see an unboxing? I don't even know what's in here. This could be, um, this could be uh, a, a potato slicer. I don't even know what's in here. Um, cool. You guys want to see what's in here? Oh, whoa! I got a. Oh, hey, uh, Luna Knight, sorry that I missed the chat. The chat was moving without me. Luna Knight, it's good to see you. We are giving out Karn. Uh, um, oh, Simon MK, good to see you. Micah, good to see you. Sorry that I didn't see the uh, I didn't see the chat moving, so I'll, I'll catch up with the chat now. So I'll do crispy. Look, I'll do the code linker first, and then we're going to do this unboxing. Um, I think it's Silver Falls merch, or it's, or it's a potato slicer. Or it's, um, or it's like a, a very large Sailor Moon action figure. I don't know what's in there. <laughs> Let me just do your, uh, do your code linkers now. So this one will be for Chris B. Uh, yeah, we're giving out Karn for Fight Inside the Tumba. Okay, Chris B, your code. Uh, o, U, oh, why? U, why? It's a pretty cool link code. Uh, X, Y, Q, and Y. Okay, and then uh, who else? Micah, good to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out on the screen here. Uh, Micah, we have um, X, C, K. You guys missed it. Earlier on the stream, we had negative concurrent viewers. Don't know how it happened. We think it was there were a couple ghosts. There had to have been at least four ghosts in the stream for us to have negative numbers. Uh, G, F, Q, M, K. Uh, yeah, that should be for Micah. Cool. Not for Micah, which I think is a geologic term. I used to be a, um, a spelunker, as it were, digging up fossils, a fossicker. There we go, I was a fossicker for uh, a time in my life. Um, Simon M.K., this is the seabrush. Man, I never got the hang of the program. I was always confused whenever I tried to do a simple sculpture. Um, yeah, it's Bro the Salmon. I think Bro the Salmon said it. This is Sculptress. Sculptress is free. It's very easy to use. 
I like that it doesn't get in my way. Um, it has just enough automation and just enough tools to do exactly what I need, and it doesn't get in my way. Uh, so I'm really happy. Uh, excuse me, I'm really happy to be sculptors. Okay. You can see in streams in less than two, three hours, we've made complete models and we've rigged them up, we've painted them, so, um, you know, it's, it's easy to use. Uh, so, uh, Luna Knights, you missed it. This is called a face taker. Um, when you have a character die, uh, this guy will take the face and he'll wear it, he'll stretch it, he'll hold the face uh, with his little hands, and he'll be wearing the little face. Um, he doesn't seem to understand that's not how human faces work, so uh, probably not great. Uh, Josh Moo, give it up, Jay Bless, sculpting some creamy glutes. Hey, check out the check out the glutes on this bad boy. You know what? Mmm, creamy glutes right there. It's about as that's probably on in the top that's probably A tier when it comes to creaminess on the glutes here, especially what we've worked on stream. I would I would love if this was the first aid juice bottle. Oh man. Uh, Awakening Bear, this is for White Inside its Umbra. We're giving out um fun. Okay, we're opening it. We're opening it, everyone. Mica is a type of gem in Steven Universe that is mentioned and never shown. Oh, people love that when they mention stuff and never show it. So this is a uh, Kershaw. Um, it says 1760, which I'm assuming is the model number. A buddy gave this to me. Excellent blades. They really hold their edge. Uh, very rarely do I have to sharpen this guy. It's just a well-balanced blade. Uh, very, very um, reliable. I love the catch mechanism. It's reliable. Uh, it doesn't stick. It actually doesn't swing out loose, which I really like. Um, you can just pop that out loosely if you want, if you don't want to swing it out wildly. I have some that feel really uncomfortable and dodgy when you launch them. So, let's go ahead and open this bad boy here. Alright everyone, I wonder what this is. I'm going to find out what this is. Okay, we remove those bits. Okay. Oh. Okay. Actually, I think we might need the knife skin. Here we go, everyone. Hey, what's this look like? Okay. All right. That's looking real nice. <laughs> I can't believe someone mailed you physical innovations. Yeah, an actual innovation. Go over there. Ooh. I'm quite excited, if you can't tell. I'm terribly excited. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to push this through the sleeve here. Let's see what this fellow is like. Hey, Josh Moog, I'll get your I'll get your link code in just a second. Maybe a few seconds. Your Wii U pad battery is dead. Oh, you have to buy a new one, don't you, Ben? Mine doesn't... My, my Wii U gamepad's not great for holding charge. Alright, here we go. Alright. I think this is... I can't remember what measurement this is. Here we go. Oh, our beautiful son! Behold him! Oh! Uh, Maverick says, uh, Reach for your dreams. Because you will most likely fail. But at least you can say you tried. So this print quality is... This print quality in manufacturing is looking pretty nice. What do you guys think? Oh, uh, this is... I get them satin. Uh, so this is uh, satin style. And I'm... I'm very happy. Uh, I, I can't wait to find a spot for this guy. Equips knife to defense weapon slot. Oh, Rashad Z, Sculptors is pretty much diet ZBrush. I find this tool low-key better than ZBrush. It has a way better user base. That's interesting input. Thanks for, for the input on that. Um, I think I tried ZBrush once, and I think it was... it was For me, it was doing too much to help me, and it kind of got in my way. So I like tools that don't do too much. Um, yeah, so that is our Maverick poster. What do you guys think of that? 
I can't, I can't wait to put this up. There's three different sizes that you can get order the posters in, um, because I know that some people might not have huge space, so you can get smaller sizes or you can get larger sizes. I think this one's the me the medium size. So there's a small, medium, and large for the posters. I'm totally in. <laughs> Look at our boy. That's our boy there. What a beautiful boy. Okay. I need to I need to find a spot where I'm not going to to get this ruined. So I'm just going to stand up and I'm going to get myself a coffee as well. So I'll be right back. Looks like we're back at the yes. Okay, thanks for waiting. Oh, well, we can bear you mean the, the battery isn't charged. Okay, I thought you meant it was totally dead. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Do you know say I'm framing mine? Uh, yeah, um, you can get them small, medium, and large. So, okay, great. Uh, Lunar Nights, you had to buy an off-brand battery for your gamepad. It's supposed to last four hours, but it's really only one or two. Oof. I've bought Game Boy Advance batteries that that are off-market ones that sort of did the same thing, where they didn't hold battery for that long. 
T squared. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. All right. What? Uh, hey, you know what? Let me open some music for. Um, let me open some music for White Inside Summer. We'll put that on the playlist here since we're doing Code Linker. So what I'm what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a little bit of um, flesh definition, or what I like to call flesh edition. Uh, and then that will just help them look a little lumpier up top. Uh, then I'll do my optimizing pass, and then we'll paint him. And I think it'll be fun. I want to sculpt... We, okay, wow, we, we've we only been an hour and 15 minutes. Th this was a pretty fast sculpt. Um, I'm going to start on the second one. Um, I'll be starting on the second face taker. Like I said, there's more than one face taker. Uh, they all have a different functionality, and they all sort of do. I think I'm going to leave those as nubs, actually. I might put little hooks on them. Give them little hooks. But those fingers up there, oh, I don't like that at all. Um, I'm going to put human teeth in there as well. Uh, and those lips were made for kissing. TTPP, <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for hanging out. We'll, we'll put a couple more veins on there. Put, put some on the arms. Uh, we'll put some veins on, on this front section. So uh, there will be a human face. The skin will get stretched, and those little hands will hold the human face in place there. All right, so let me go ahead and bring up some music from White Inside It's Umbra. Okay, but where's, where is Winamp here? Oh, hey, this one's a fun one. There we go. Night get cold. Oh, night night gets cold is already in there. Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, T squared. Have you ever been to a video game expo? Um, no, I would, I would really like to go to one. They look like so much fun. Um, yeah, have you been to? Okay, in the chat, this is a question for, for everyone in the chat. Um, who here has been to a, a video game expo, and, and what was it like when you went to it? I just gotta make this boy a little lumpier. Okay, I want to put a, some veins here on the front. Okay, that's too much, too thick. Go ahead and size down a bit. And actually, okay, here's here's where, okay, here's okay. I, this is where you're going to have problems when you have too much symmetry. Uh, things don't look good. Um, it's just not a good look. So what I will do now is turn off symmetry button sculptors. It's like a one, one way street. So I'm going to save it uh, as a new file now. So I'll go. I'll save it now. Actually, before I do that, I'll I'll make him. I'll do the lumpiness first. Okay. And then I'm going to turn off um, symmetry. And that's where we're going to make him look even creepier. Right. Okay. So we'll just give him a little bit of lumpiness. Uh, I'm going to grab. I'm going to. Bring this in. Bring that in like that. We just want him a little lumpier. Uh, again, I want to express that sense of a weight um, mass being pulled down to the bottom here. So that's how I'm thinking of my lumpiness. I kind of like this little crest up top. I'm going to leave that. And I want to accentuate this sort of lumpiness back here. There we go. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty happy uh, with this degree of lumpiness. So 
What I'm going to do is, uh, actually I'll bring it in just a little more. There we go, and that face can get stretched right up in there. But I want the face to be kind of flat, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't want it faced at an angle, I want the face to be flat. So we're going to straighten that out a bit. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'll be not good. I like that. I like that very much. Ooh, nice and fleshy. There we go. Okay, now we need to get rid of this little bump in the middle. Yeah, and for, for anyone that I haven't explained my uh, workflow to yet, I'm using a Wacom Intuos 4, and I'm using two different stylus that have different sensitivity levels and different tips. And I, I really like working in Sculptress with a Wacom tablet. Any drawing tablet will do because there's pressure sensitivity. Okay, dogs are barking. Right, now I'm going to save. This is what a beautiful boy. Well, very quickly, I, I won't waste too much time um, with, with optimizing right now. Um, just to make the stream more interesting, I'll just start painting him and then I'll, just a test paint so we can see what he looks like. Then I'll move on to our next face taker as there are a couple different face takers. Let's see here. So I'm going to save as, uh, and I'll do it. There we go. S2. So now we have a new stage, and I'm going to turn off symmetry. I wonder why my dogs are barking. I wonder if they'll just stop barking on their own. A T squared. You went to a video game expo last year, and it was so much fun. You got to meet a few of your favorite content creators. Awesome, that's so cool. It must be really cool getting to meet um, content creators and just, you know, get to see them in person, just just tell them, hey, I really enjoy um, the stuff you make, you know? I think that'd be really awesome. Okay, so our symmetry is off. So I'm just gonna give him, give him some lumpy veins now. Give him what we're gonna do is make him asymmetrical now. Okay, let's give him some veins up here. Oop, a bit of a skip, I moved too fast there. Yeah, we have lumpy veins. Lumpy veins is fine. It's branching off, there we go. Okay. Let's get one. Let's get one down here. About like a. There we go. Okay, so we want to make him asymmetrical. So what we're going to do is grab, uh, and I'm just going to make one side lopsided. I'm going to pull him out and down a little bit. Out and down. There we go. Okay, not sure why like that. Out and down, out, and down a little bit, and this side will bring him up, just to uh, further exaggerate, 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 I want to exaggerate the asymmetry, uh, bring that in a bit more, bring this up, and now we have a little bit more subtle asymmetry going to drag it down a bit more just so the asymmetry is exaggerated a bit more there we go and now see these veins are still adding some symmetrical value to the creature the cryptid so I'm looking at it and I'm kind of thinking um, I'm thinking like this I'm just gonna do one of these here I want to break up the symmetry is what I'm trying to do right now Okay, I'll turn off the wireframe. There we go, we've lost symmetry now. What do you guys think of this fun, fun boy? All right, we're very quickly, just gonna do a very quick pass. Um, 
for um, smoothing and optimizing. And then I'm going to paint him and then we'll move on to our second guy. Okay, so I don't, I don't want to dwell on him too much as it's, it's probably a bit boring to dwell on it too much. Um, so we'll, we'll just do a quick, quick pass here. We'll paint him, do a quick paint test. It won't be the final version. Then we'll move on to our second creature that we're working on. So what do you guys think of it so far? Dog saw the face taker on stream. I feel like uh, my dogs would probably flip out if they saw this and they would probably... My dogs are pretty smart. I think they would run away. No, I think one would run away, um, and I think the other one would try to fight it, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I, I like to smooth in where the veins should be re-entering the body. That's why you see me um, smoothening out um, those uh, edges of the veins there. There we go. So the veins re-enter the body. We'll smoothen that out. There we go. Yeah, that seems to make sense. That makes sense. And then I, I added some here, but I like how lumpy that is. I like that. Okay. Now I'm going to do a quick pass and we'll paint him. We'll paint up our friend. There he is. I'll save it again as a different document, uh, as a sort of a, a, a backup. Happy Little Monsters is the next mobile entry. Oh yeah, it's like a Silver Falls um, monster raising game where you match three, uh, you input your mother's credit card, and then you get to raise little little happy Silver Falls creatures. These fun, fun boys. Oh, look at his look at his hands. <laughs> uh. Oh, has anyone seen the Mario movie? They read as scar tissue uh, to me, but only because of the current material color. Yeah. <laughs> you love this painting boy. <laughs> oh, you have to run. Uh, oh, you said fun. Oh, not fall asleep after you finish your 30 minute long game. Uh, some weird creature that would come out of a river. This, yeah, he could, he could probably come out of a river. This seems like he'd be pretty good in the water. You enjoyed the Mario movie? I haven't seen it. Uh, I would like to, I would really like to see it. Okay, so I've saved it as a new step. We're going to do a quick pass on just um, reducing the poly count because it's it's like over half a million triangles right now. We'll just do a quick pass. And then we're gonna paint it. Pass on these. We're at, we're at 200, oh god, his back feet, oh, oh, I hate what I've done. Okay, his adorable little um, glutes, his creamy glutes, nice and creamy. Okay, we're going to reduce some of the uh, poly count there, some of it there, a little bit on the hands. Again, this, is, this isn't going to be the final version, I'm just doing this for the stream so we can paint him. Uh, just optimizing a little bit, reducing... Oh yeah, of course, the hole! Grandpappy always told me, reduce your hole poly count first. Gotta have his kissable lips under his body, we're not so concerned about that. There we go. Alright, we're at we're at 100,000. This is fine for painting. Let's go ahead and paint this bad boy. So I'll save it. This is S3. Okay. We'll, we'll do a quick paint test and then we'll move on to our second guy. Wow, we're not even we're not even an hour and a half in. We made this guy really fast. Good job, everyone. Good work. Chris B, you saw the Mario movie. I I think it's weird that the critics are just going out of their way to hate the Mario movie, and they're complaining about it like it's it's not you know like the Goodfellas or something. Um, it's just a movie for fun. It's it's meant to give people something fun to watch and to enjoy. What's wrong with that? Dream Pillet. Uh, the Mario movie was a good time, definitely thin on the plot and on the more nonsensical side of family movies, but it's a great tribute to the franchise. That's great. Glad to hear that. It just should be fun. As long as it isn't egregious, it's not offensive, it's not horrible. Why can't we just enjoy things that are fun, you know? 
Movie.com. The movie was great. Hey, I'm glad to hear that. I would like to see it. Maybe, maybe next week. The thing is, I've, I've got like three weeks to get Silverball's face takers done, so I got to do these character models very quickly. Um, and again, I'm using the framework that I used from Three Down Stars and uh, Episode Prelude, which is why I think I can finish it in three weeks, as I've already finished the framework. There is a fair bit of programming I have to do, um, because uh, Silver Falls Face Takers has its own unique gameplay style. I think I can handle that within three weeks. So we'll see. We'll see whether or not. Maybe four weeks. Maverick Mug. Feels like a lot of scenes were cut out. Jack Black is the actual best part of it. Cool. I, I, did do, I do like Jack Black. I like him in movies, whenever he's in. All right. Let's go ahead and add a set here. Cool. I got, I'm going to do a base level, right? Uh, so I want to do just a, a base coat, as it were, as we call it in the business. All right, just, just a base coat, no big deal. I'm gonna switch my styluses now. That one has a lower sensitivity uh, felt tip. This one has a plastic tip, higher sensitivity. Just a, just a quick base coat here. Oh, what a fun boy. What a beautiful boy you are. What a big beautiful boy. Yes, you are. Look at them kissable lips. Those have to be a different color from the rest of the body so they stand out so people understand that they're kissing. Yeah, this is a good, this is a good boy. I don't mean for these monstable monsters to be so lovable. Um, I want them to be feared and, and reviled, but I can't help it. I can't help it if he's a big kissable boy. Like my grandpappy always told me, make sure you paint under your arms. It's easy to miss under it, under there, you know what I mean? Um, Emily, good to see you. How are you? Um, he's also the most experienced at voice and game characters at, as a voice actor. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's a great actor. Hey, let's try and like, um, what if we... That one looks kind of creamier, doesn't it? Yeah? Kind of like the cream, it's just for the stream, you know what I mean? We also have this one. Oh, uh, no, that sort of, that gets in the way of our vision. This one's pretty, pretty creamy as well. We're just doing a base coat right now. And again, this is just a test. You know, we're just doing a quick test. I need to come back uh, later on. Uh, it's it's going to be boring, um, you know, doing all the all the finishing work. So I'll, I'll do that later on after the stream. So here we'll just keep it fun, keep it entertaining. Uh, we can chat, uh, save the boring stuff for later. All right, we have our base coat done. What a beautiful boy! Yeah, this is this is 100%. Uh, it's exactly what I had envisioned, envisioned in my mind, but it's somehow worse. Ooh. So you can imagine a face skin stretched across there. Oh, you like Keegan? I'm a big fan of, of Keegan Michael Key. Also, and this is super art nerd challenging character design thing. They changed his body shapes a lot on, on Mario or Toad. In an interesting way that gives his head way more toony softness to work with than his default head doesn't really work with well. That's very interesting to consider all, all those sort of um, those those things when you're creating characters that you know you have to animate them a certain way. They have to be expressive a certain way. So I think that's very interesting. All right, let's see. What, I just want to see what this looks like. Um, okay, so um, in terms of direction, where is no? It's the Uh, 
I turn that on, right? Okay, see here, here the, the way that I angle my stylus, like, you can see how it's rotating. The way I angle the stylus actually changes the, um, the angle of the brush. So I, I'm trying to hold it in place here. Ugh, come on. Ah. I wish I could lower the sensitivity on the rotating because it's kind of, it's kind of freaking out a little bit. I want to give him muscle striations is what I'd like for this guy. Let's go ahead and put some muscle striations on there. I want it going the other way. Can we? Some muscle striations on this guy. There we go. Oh yeah, that's nice. What a good boy you are. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay. I want the hands to remain that fleshy thing, though I don't want the hands to look um, like the muscle striations. I gotta zoom right out with this brush or it looks weird. There we go. Oh, we need his glutes to be real muscly, huh, don't we? There we go. Yeah, this is basically what I had in mind. Yeah. That's basically what I had in mind for this fellow. That's looking real good. I need to get rid of this vertical vertical muscle striation there. It doesn't blend well. Okay, that's looking good. That's looking kissable right there is what I call that. Um, let's go ahead and use this one uh, for the face a little bit. The face. There we go. So the face needs to go there. Let's go ahead and get these lips just a little bit more kissable, why don't we? Um, let's go... Hmm. Ah, what's kissable here? I'm gonna try this one. Try that. Let's zoom in here. Oh, you know what? What if it was like, yeah, you know what? No, it needs to stand out more. So I'm going to use this one here for his kissable lips. I already, I can guess what this is going to look like, and I already don't like it. Yep, I hate it. <laughs> Oops. I already don't like this. Oh no, what am I doing? What am I doing? I could have stopped myself. I could still stop myself. I still have time to stop myself, but I'm not, I'm not stopping for some reason. I'll go random direction on this. Why aren't I stopping myself from doing this? Oh no. This is, these are chapped lips. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. Um, this fella needs chapstick hard. There we go. There's our boy. There he is. Well, that's kissable. Alright, what do you guys think? Hey, Lunar Knights, let me get your code for you. Um, yeah, and then I would I would do some details, you know, just to sort of accentuate the legs a bit more. But this is it. This is our fun guy. This is uh, one of the face takers that will be in Silver Falls face takers. Um, fun. I look kind of like a face crab, but with <laughs> with lips. Um, yeah, he's going to be massive. So the player's the player height is going to end up about here. So this is where he's going to hold on to a face. He's going to stretch a face skin. Uh, so he's he's significantly bigger than the player, and he's got kissing lips down here that's going to have some human teeth. Oh, you totally thought you could paint with sculptures. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, so I'll come back. I'll do the final draft later on, but this is fun. I need to just come back and paint his, his little hands, you know. Uh, see, I got the muscle striation texture on his little um, graspers. Claspers. What do you call them on sharks? claspers. So let's go ahead, you know. Yeah, I would just come back and, you know, give him the clasper textures. You know, something like that, you know. No big worries. You, you could, you could, 
you know, however long you need to spend on that, you can spend. So I'll come back to that. But that's basically that's basically our fun boy. Uh, I'll rig him up. Um, that'll be that'll be fun. Hoping that Maya just lets me rig it without any issues, because again, I, I do need to build this game very quickly. So yeah, we'll just we'll look at this fun fella. Hey, Tim Allen, good to see you. Thanks for coming, Lunar Knights. I'm doing your code now. So we're going to uh, move on to our next face taker. So this is one of the face takers. The next face taker is going to be a smaller one, and he's going to have very sharp hands. Uh, I'm actually not going to fully model his hands because I'm going to add blades in engine. So in the game engine, I'll have a smaller face taker, and he'll, he'll have nub hands with a blade stuck coming out of it. And it'll be implied he's the one that sort of slices your face off with his this thing. Yeah, okay, Lunar Knights, I'm doing your code. <laughs> Mus uh, roll the salmon. Oh, may your friend, good to see you, hey. Uh, roll the salmon, muscular glutes are actually one of the f defining features of mankind. Their sides lets us walk bipedally. Well, that's true, uh, and that's why we gotta have good, strong glutes, man. You can't can't skimp on, on your glutes. B-P-P-T-M. This is for Luna Knights. Trilogy of Karn is now the title of my upcoming Jazz Fusion EP. I'll listen to that. I'll buy that for a dollar. All right, Luna Knights, your unlock code is Y-T-J-R-J. -J. Okay, great. And again, I do have updates coming for the current Silver Falls games. They're just processing. <laughs> uh, is it? Uh, imagine a heavy breathing sound. So is this a monster going to make kissing noises? Like, n no. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think his lips, his lips will be. Um, I don't think they'll be puck puckerable. I don't think they can pucker. But I will have like, like um, drool just dripping from the lips the whole time, because he wants to give you a big old smooch. There's going to be teeth in there. Hey, Raiko, all right, great. Uh, I'll do your code when you when you post it. Uh, Raiko, yeah, yeah. So, that's right. Karn was in uh, for the other games, but now this is for White Inside of Sunbreak. Uh, this is basically uh, Jarrell's take on Krang from the Ninja Turtles. I love Krang. I, I do the Krang voice, but I I don't know if, if my Krang impersonation is very good. I used to do it all the time with my friends at school. You know, um... He was always fun. He was always fun to do. Okay, so this is our fun boy. Uh, let's go ahead and start on our next uh, face taker. Okay. So I'm just going to start new. Where's the Where's the new button here? Is there a new button here? Uh, new sphere. Uh, new scene. Okay. So hope you guys enjoyed uh, this face taker. And if you had missed it, I mean, there's this fun. There's this fun little feet there. Uh. Ugh. I, I actually, I think this is one of my favorite designs I've done so far. Um, I really, I actually really like this. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to like it that much. I mean, I hate it. I obviously hate it very much, but I really like how it turned out. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Let's go ahead and move on to our next face taker. Ah, starting fresh. No, I don't. I don't want that. No. Shredder. <laughs> That's iconic. Krang is iconic. Okay, and this is going to be. Um, let me go ahead and find my project here, and I'll save him. Face Taker Three. All right. Uh, what a style game is Face Takers? Okay, so I'll um, explain to you what Face Takers is all about. So, um, Face Takers uses the abstraction engine, so it uh, plays similarly to Three Down Stars and Episode Prelude, but it's not story focused. So, how Fa Silver Falls Face Takers works is you start a game, or you start, you know, you, you start playing. And every time you start playing the game, you're given a new camper. And the camper is randomly uh, determined. So the camper will have random graphics. They'll have uh, random stat spread and random um, skills. 
and you start by playing during the daytime and that gives you time to collect materials from the wilderness so you have to try and find items for healing you'll be able to build a couple items as well um, like campfires and, and traps um, and geez these are creamy thighs look at those thighs yikes oof okay been doing some tie bow you can tell um so you only have a couple minutes to play during the daytime uh and let me look at my scale here okay so he's got a he's gonna have one of these things going on i actually want him to be a little a little furry here okay so you play during the daytime you collect resources and then it becomes nighttime and then when it's nighttime uh, there's going to be waves of enemies that will attack you so you have to try to survive the enemy waves you have to defeat as many enemies as you can and you have to kill the enemies and hopefully with any luck you'll survive the wave so if you survive the wave you get a reward and you earn something called a, um, a safety uh, a safety slot so that means one of your items um, is now safe so if that camper dies um, that item will be sent to your storage so basically um, eventually um, you're going to keep facing increasingly more difficult enemy waves until you just can't um, fight the enemies anymore and you get killed so when you get killed your camper dies and you lose your items um, and you are given a new camper and that new camper again has randomly determined um, a look to them so their their graphics their visuals are different and their stat spread and their starting items and their skills are different again so if you find your body of your previous uh, camper that got killed depending on how many enemies uh, waves they defeated how long they survived you'll get to um, have more of your items because they'll be sent um, to your storage but when you find your previous camper you can pick up a skill memento and that skill memento has a skill attached to it so uh, you know basically every time you lose a camper you're helping the next camper because the next camper will be able to equip a memento from their dead friend and they'll get skills from it um, and you want to do well and you want to uh, survive as many waves as possible because if if your character dies if you're holding any of your skill mementos you'll lose the skill memento but if you defeat you know say if you defeat five enemy waves then five of your item slots won't be lost any items in those safety slots will be sent to your storage so there is a reward for doing well so you want to do well enough to where your good items you can keep them and and save them for your next camper in face takers you won't get to play as any of the familiar characters from Silver Falls, you only play as these campers who just keep getting killed by face takers. The story of face takers takes place uh, just before Three Down Stars. So that gives you a hint. In Three Down Stars, you know, there were people in town that kept talking about um, people are going missing, um, pe campers are going missing. Um, this is what they were talking about. These are the campers that went missing in Three Down Stars. So it is connected to the rest of the series, but you don't play as any named characters. And this game won't have Code Linker out. And the story reason for that is basically no one survives the face takers. That's the whole whole thing. Is that these these monsters are so dangerous that anyone that's gone up against them so far didn't make it. They've all been killed. Uh, and that's the story of the face takers. So yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And I'm I'm hoping to have this done. I need a I need to sprint through this development, so I'm hoping I can have it done and submitted within three to four weeks. Well, three weeks, and then a dedicated week for testing and fine tuning, and then I have to submit it. And of course, uh, I can keep fine tuning and adjusting it after launch. But I need a game selling on the Switch as soon as possible to in order to keep my studio um, financially viable. Oh man, this is a chunky boy. Look at these chunky meat hammers down here. There we go. You could you could you could add you could add little appendage flaps all day long and it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse, so. Oh 
There we go. Look at those chunky chunks, right? Oh, I hate it. I hate it. So he's not a well balanced in terms of his body right now. So I need to, I need to do something so it looks like his weight is distributed uh, fairly. So let's go ahead and just grab that and just move it like that. Look at those, look at those fun boys down there. There's a party going on down there. That's a whole party. Okay. Cool. What do you guys think so far? How's this looking so far? Face takers just sounds creepy. I can't wait. This is probably going to be the most horror focused um, Silver Falls. Well, not probably. It will be the most horror focused so far. Um, and I was trying to lead up to this. I wanted I wanted this game to be to be um, launched, you know, years from now. But I have to get a game onto the Switch very quickly, uh, just you know, for financial reasons. So I'm I'm trying to make it um, as soon as I can because I wanted the characters to talk about the face takers more. We hear a little bit about them in um, Three Down Stars. Um, Slim talks about it. If you finish um, the story mode in Three Down Stars and then you um, play through Epilogue One, Slim will tell you stories about the face takers. Um, I think they might talk about them in White Inside Its Umbra through geo, geo signals, um, and in Guide and Deathly Delusion Destroyers they talk about the face takers. Sometimes they're referred to as face stealers. It just depends on who's telling the story um, in the lore. It's meant to be it's meant to be a campfire story, but then eventually you find out they're real, and this is the game that's the reveal that face takers actually exist. So I'm gonna slenderize this boy. Slenderize is a an industry term. It's definitely real. I didn't just make it up. It's um, professionals use the word slenderize all the time. Ask John Carpenter, you know, um, slenderize me, Captain. Is you know, you wouldn't get it. You would if it's, it's for big for big professional, you know, monster designers, you know. Um, so slenderizes, you, you wouldn't have heard of it, you know. But but us us, you know, I'm basically best friends with John Carpenter, you know, um, is what I'm saying. We basically we're basically besties. We're basically twins. I, Gino's a, I dubbed this monster Quadbo. <laughs> Ultra Dolphin 64 hey, good to see you. Thanks for coming to the stream. Uh, I hope you're doing okay after all that's happened lately. Um, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing normal. <laughs> it's going to take a while. I, I really needed to take a break. I needed to step away from game development um, for a while because of, of the demanding workload that I had done. Um, and then the marketing push um, for when the shops ended was it's a bit more than than what I was able to comfortably handle so it's a little uncomfortable um, but if I don't make this game and launch it on the switch within two months or so then it my my studio is going to be in a very tough spot because I can't earn money on the Wii U and 3ds anymore so I have no choice but to keep working on this so here's my here's my thinking for this fun boy right we we normally have like the other Silver Falls monsters, their appendages just come out, right? I want this guy's appendages to look like they're coming out of a hole, um, uncomfortably. So that's that's what I'm thinking here. So this is, I want this to look a little uncomfortable. Um, so I think I'm there. I think I'm, I'm there at the uncomfortable part. Just make it a little rounder up here. I think we're there. I think... I think we're there, guys. This is uncomfortable, I think. Yep. Yep. Okay, we're gonna grab it. And I'm looking at a center of gravity, and I, I, I know where his masses is going to be, so I'm just going to drag this back. I'm, I'm gonna give him some, some veins and some more musculature down here so it makes more sense um, in a second. What have I done? What did I do? What's up now? Okay. Okay, we need to fix this. This has gotten, this is out of control now. So let's just, we're fixing it. We're fixing it. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Let's just, this doesn't make sense right now. We're just going to smoothen that out so it makes sense. I really, I just, I really like working in sculptures. It's just such a fast tool um, and it doesn't get in your way for, unless you push 
The only thing that can go wrong with sculptures is if you push a button, because there's quite a few shortcuts, and like you can you can activate a tool that you're not familiar with, and then you could end up messing up your sculpt. Um, and that's just something you have to keep in mind. You know, any tool can be like that. Um, yeah, this is already like this doesn't look right. I'm happy with that. Okay. Zombie U is only 10 to 15 on eBay right now. Hey, nice. Nice. Okay, I'm going to catch up with the chat here. Um, oh, Ryko, I see your code. I'm doing your code now. Sorry about that. I didn't see it until just now. Okay, Ryko, doing your code. And this is for Karn and White Inside its Umbra. And again, there is an update coming to fix um, quite a few things. H M B B S. H M B B S. Ryko. E Q H H P. There we go. The Costco rotisserie uh, chicken is alive. <laughs> Rashad Z, never skip leg day. Well, it's 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 true. Never skip leg day. Otherwise, how are you going to get these creamy glutes, huh? You want those creamy glutes. You want them leg hams, don't you? So, of course, we have to define our glutes here. Got to get some glute definition. There's our fella. There's our fella. <laughs> these things are so gross. I hate these things. <laughs> All right. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to do an early optimizing pass because I have an incredible poly count, but I actually have to uh, reduce, uh, I have to make it asymmetrical very early on. I normally don't make it asymmetrical until much later on in the sculpt, but this monster by, by design is, is very asymmetrical. So... Uh, I'm just going to, hang on, I smoothened that out, and that's not actually what I wanted, so I'm going to undo that, undo, 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 okay, we're good. So what I wanted to do was, um, wrong again, I want to use my reduce brush, and I'm just going to reduce my, my ground hams here, okay, because we are going asymmetrical very quickly. Okay, that's looking that's looking reasonable now. Oh, I hate that. Oh. Okay, I need to fix this up as well. This part is a little messed up. So I'm just going to um these need to be kind of kind of lumpy. But also they need to make sense. Hold on here. Hold on. Okay, there we go. All right, now let me fix this up. I'm just going to make this look a little bit more organic and anatomical now. You want some thick, like, runner thighs. Like, you see someone running down the street like a regular jogger. Um, not a jogger, but like, you know, someone trained for a marathon, they got them thick calves. Um, but you got to make them chunky as well. There we go. You've got these sort of tumors on his knees here. They might be a little much. So if I want to, I'd like to reduce these tumors a bit. There we go. Um, sort of define. Uh oh, I think it crashed. It crashed. That's all right. Sculptress does have a recovery. So hopefully I'm only a couple steps back. I'm going to open Sculptress again and then it will recover. This tends to happen. I've got other things running in the background. So let's see. Thank you, Sculptress. This is why I really like Sculptress. Let's see. I still got my chunky thighs. Real nice. And I'll just make sure I save my progress. This is face taker number three. So there's at least three face takers. Oh, I know why it crashed. My, my tablet, I think, you know how like USB is weird? Like if you wiggle a USB cord a little bit, it, um, it disconnects. So if my tablet gets slightly disconnected for like a split second, it actually um, makes sculptures crash. So that's that's what's happened. Oops, that's no good. So 
you want to sort of um, fix that up. It's smooth in there. There we go. All right. Okay. We are back on track, everyone. We are back on track. We're good. We're good. Oh, hold on. That's not really how I wanted it to look. I want to switch. I, I knew something felt off I'm switching back to my other stylus that has different sensitivity settings. Okay, and we'll just do like that. There we go. So that looks a little more anatomical now. Um, okay, that's looking more anatomical. Um, I'll just do this here. I'll crease this. You're not, you're not really going to see this that much. So I'm just trying to work quickly here. There we go. We want just a bit more definition. Um, let's get some definition in these. I'm just, uh, uh, I need to visualize where that crease is going to be. And I think it's going to be about there. Okay. And then again, I'll even those out. There we go. That that should make sense. And then um, along here, there we go. And then we'll put a crease here. Uh, we need some thigh creases as well. So let's go ahead and put some of those in there like that. Some thigh creases. That's... Oh. <laughs> mm, I don't like it. What do you guys think? Uh, Chris B. So it's quite a dark game. Yes, this one is uh, face takers is is pretty dark um, because it no one survives face takers the game. It's that's why that's the gameplay style is uh, every character you play as eventually you're going the the enemy horde just keeps getting difficult more and more difficult. Um, so eventually, if you have a character that you really like. You play as long as you can and enjoy that character for as much as you can because eventually they'll get killed. Um, so, you know, enjoy life. Enjoy enjoy the eShop while you can because it will be taken away from you. That's the message of the story. Okay, how's this look here? Yeah, that's our friend. That's our friend. Oh, what a nice friend. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's just go ahead and I want to, I want to, I need a visual, uh, muscular, um, I need this to make sense here visually. There we go. There we go. Um, just going to reduce now. I'm, I'm going to do an early optimization pass. I'm down here. Early optimization pass. And then we are going asymmetrical, everyone. I'm moving pretty fast on this build. Again, I've got like three weeks to finish this game. Uh, here we go. Okay, we're good? Okay. I'm going to save this now as a new file. So if I, if I uh, change something that I don't like, I can always come back to this one. So I'm um, going S2, which is stage two. Okay. Let me catch up with the chat now. Hopefully Silver Falls will have a better ending than that game had. What's, what's Mass Effect? Um, which, how did that end? I I played some of Mass Effect 3 on the Wii U, I think. Um, I haven't played Zombie U in, in ages, such a long time. Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking um, this has to lean forward more, because I'm looking at um, the legs here. Actually, the legs need to come farther back. So before I, um, yeah, before I turn off um, symmetry, I'm just going to move these back a little. There we go. I need the weight distribution to make sense. I'll have him punch forward more. Okay. I just need those to come farther back. Okay, it needs to make sense anatomically. There we go. I mean... You know, believably enough that none of these make sense anatomically. All right, so I want him. I need to slenderify him again. So 
or slend slenderize, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna slenderize this fella here. There we go. All right, now, saving it, and we're turning off symmetry, and then we're going to, um, so I need to give him an arm. So this, this is a face taker that's gonna have a slicing metal bit. The metal bit will be stuck on his hand. And I actually want you to be able to shoot the metal thing out of his hand. So if you aim correctly, shoot the metal thing, you can shoot it off of his body. Uh, and probably he'll deal less damage to you at that point. Arnold inspiration kicking in. Yep, I'm thinking of them thick muscles is what I'm thinking of. All right, so you know how I said I wanted his um, arms coming out of holes? So it's gonna be his, this one's gonna have, so I needed to find a hole now. So this is going to be a hole and his arm is going to come out of it. Okay. Let's make a, a orbital, an arm, an orbital arm hole, I think is what they call that in anatomy. Um, I know how bodies work. This is going to be our arm, orbital arm hole. He's going to have one arm that's way thicker than the other. Look forward to paying $2.99 for quad bows, rotisserie, chicken skin, and happy little monsters. Yeah, that's going to be, um, it's um, pay, pay to, pay to fun. So um, the game uh, will just be all microtransactions, actually. It's just microtransactions, um, nothing else. Okay, so I'm thinking this is this armhole is looking all right here. Yeah, we want it to sink down a bit so it looks cavernous. There we go. What if he had like a little mouth here with teeth? I'm, I'm sort of thinking, I don't really want him to have to be like the mouth type because the other guy's the mouth, isn't he? You know. Um. So no, I think I don't think he needs a mouth. I think he's got everything he needs. What if his little mouth was right up top? I think that would be a little upsetting. We all know what's going on. Designed by Bulbous Beast. These knees remind me of when they kicked that alien in the knees in Star Trek V, The Undiscovered Country. I haven't seen that one, but now I'm going to have to look for a clip. Okay, let's turn up the strength here. Get strong. This one's going to be his buff arm, so I'm going to inflate this arm. Uh, after I'm done building it out, I'm going to inflate it. Okay, so that needs to be... This needs to have good, good stabbing range, you know what I mean? So it's going to be a real thick, chunky arm. This is his good arm. And then the other one's going to be, like, weak and measly. Okay, we need this to be bigger. This is his, this isn't this. It looks thin now, but it's going to be buff. You know, it's going to be as. This is going to be muscly. All right. Okay, here we go. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it's not buff enough, if you know what I'm saying. Not big enough. I'm just going to use the grab tool now. We're going to bring him out. Bring him out. All right. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's it. It's got to be really uh, gross. It's got to be real gross. Okay, here we go. Let's start inflating this boy. Here we go. Yes, get buff. Here we are. There we are. There's my good strong boy. Uh oh, I don't want to inflate um, the the super orbitable super orbital ridge on that, so I need to be careful. Okay, so I am going to get some pinch there. 
So what I have to do now is smoothen it and simplify. So it's smooth. Yep, got to be careful for that or I'll mess it up. Smooth. And we'll just uh, reduce brush a bit. We'll do that now so we don't mess anything up, I don't we? Okay, let me catch up with the chat here. Uh, uh, Mass Effect has your character do the impossible throughout the three games and surviving the whole time. The ending is that no matter what you do, you die anyway. Your choices end up not mattering. Oh, that's pretty, pretty rough, considering that I thought Mass Effect was all about telling the player that their choices matter. It's kind of messed up, isn't it? I'd be kind of irritated if I was a player and I was told my choices super matter, and then, and then for my choices to not matter at all, I'd be pretty irritated. Alright, here we go. Alright, let's get let's get this guy buff here. I'm gonna start drawing uh, mus muscle mass. This is our tricep. Big triceps. Now let's see, this is going to be our elbow elbow here. Triceps. Uh, okay. Well, oh, I'm focusing like really, really hard right now and I, I should just be more chill, shouldn't I? Oh, this is... Oh, yeah. This is looking awful. Delts. Let's get some bicep muscle in here. Alright, we're going to bicep. Yeah, you get it. Uh, we felt robbed. I, uh, that you're, you have to follow through on the promise. What, to me, a game is a promise. You make a promise to the player, and a lot of that promise is, I'm not going to waste your time. Here's what my promise is. I'll follow through on it. I won't waste your time. And the worst thing you can do is to just fail to deliver, and you basically lie. You don't deliver on your pro promise and you waste the player's time. Um, and that's why it feels like such a betrayal when, when game series that we love um, suddenly deliver a game that, pardon my French, they suck. Um, because these game developers make a promise to us and we are trusting the game developers to follow through on that. We are giving game developers not just our money, but our time. And we are trusting them to not betray us. So it is an absolute betrayal when, when a developer doesn't understand the promise they've made. That's a big problem as well. But you have to know, you have to actively understand the promise that you're making to your customers and your fan base. And if, if you refuse to acknowledge what that is, then you're a bad developer. That's all there is to it. Grab this section here, bring that in. Okay, now this is looking like an arm that should not be. Use nice thick forearms. Um, 
And I just want this to be a big old club hand. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so we'll inflate the thing. I'll use the grab, uh, scale tool. Um, like that. It it didn't it didn't it didn't look how I wanted it to. I'm gonna use the inflate tool. Okay, so now I need to make it look like there's bones underneath here, right? So this thing is gonna hold the piece of metal. And this is kinda like this is the metal that he uses to cut your face off. Um, you know, or bone or whatever's in there, you know. So I just need to sculpt it now so it looks like there's there's gnarled gnarled bones all, all stuck together. <laughs> Look at this thing. Those arms aren't... Let's just have a quick... Okay, yeah. We're gonna make it more lopsided as well, so that arm is already kind of upsetting to look at. I'm gonna make the hole a bit bigger, a bit more exaggerated. Uh, I'm gonna fix up my biceps a little, you know. Um, this is his strong arm. Oh, hold on. Smoothing this out and get the wireframe going. Yeah. All right, and then our inflate tool. What do we got going on here? Yeah. Oh, it's it's going in reverse. Inverted. Uh, don't invert, please. Smoothing that out. All right, now I'm going to do some grabbing here because I need to I need to widen his hole. Uh, okay. Yep. This is just going to be a big old arm cavern. Big old arm hole. Okay, let's smoothen that out. Smoothen this out as well. Yeah. Alright, that's looking alright. It's looking alright. Okay, cool. I, I already don't like the way that looks at all, which is nice. Okay, let's go ahead and widen this hole back here as well. We're gonna grab this bit. It's looking good. It's looking real good. I'll fix that up later. I'll fix it up more. I need to separate those two, see? Hold on, let me just, I'll, you know, smoothen tool. Um, we'll figure that out. There we go. Smoothen those out. And then I'll have to do some reducing on that to get it worked out. So there we go. I'm, I'm thinking of putting a mouth up there, you know? Um, okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and add some, add some, um, bone structure to this guy as well. So let me just reduce along this area real quick. I'll reduce that so it makes sense. And then I just want to make it look like there's bones underneath there now. So we have the elbow coming out from out of there, right? So we're going to uh, work from the elbow and we'll just go like that. And I'll smoothen that out a bit just so it's even like that. Um, maybe we'll smoothen that. There we go. I might just do some grabbing here. All right, just so that makes sense. And look, we'll, we'll do like this. We'll, um, we'll use the crease tool so we can separate the sense of, of bone there, like that. It was a little bit sloppy. Let me redo that. Go from, the, go from this side. Now what we'll do is we'll use our smooth tool, and so that kind of makes sense structurally. Uh, and now let's make it to where there's like another bone um, coming through here, because I'm, I'm, I'm aware of what angle the, the player will be witnessing this creature from, and so I want to make sure that that's where my definition is, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, like the, the, I know what the animations will look like. Like the underside, the player won't really see the underside of the arm 
as much of these as as these outer parts here. Okay. Let's make these meat hammers nice and chunky. That's not um, really what I wanted. I'm not, I'm not really getting what I want here. What did I do wrong? I think that line is where I went wrong. There we go. Let's try it again. All right, that's, that's looking much better here. Oh, that's gross. I don't, mm. That's just... I would change the head of that thing, it looks like a you-know-what. Oh, you think I did that on accident? Everything I do is on purpose, unless it's by accident. That's on purpose. Oops. I need the draw tool. Need to have a good jagged end on his arm or it might look wrong. <laughs> well, I think Silver Falls monsters look wrong, uh, and that's, that's how it is. Everything about this monster should look just wrong. So let's give him, give him a little bit of these here. Make sure they're nice and thick and chunky. Give him some tendon definition, or as I like to call it, tendonition. Uh, let's give him a big chunky one right here. Right? These have to look gnarled. Like these, this is not good. Whatever, whatever situation he's got here is not good. Nope, that's not what I wanted. All right, we're getting we're getting there guys. This is it. This is the concept we've got here. It's working. The concept is working. This is the most monsters we've ever sculpted in one stream before, so pretty exciting. Pretty exciting about that. Okay, we're looking good. We're looking good. All right. And we want... Where is the last thing coming up here? Okay, so we want this to make sense. Should we save our progress, everybody? Bring this in here. We'll grab that. Bring it in. Bring it all in. Uh, and we want this chunky bit here. So again, we're going to do a little bit more um, definition with the crease tool. Okay, and then we're going to um, smoothen this out. Um, smoothen that out. And we want to have a big old, a big old chonker right here. Oops, what have I done? Wrong one. Put a chonker right here. So what we'll do is we'll crease. Okay, and we're going to grab. Um, well, you know what? Let's put a crease under here like this. We'll crease it. Crease it there. Crease there, and then we'll smoothen that out. All right, what are you guys thinking of? Yeah, there we go. That's our friend. That's our friend. Okay, something like that. And we're gonna have one more happy finger coming up over here like this. This is our friend.
have fun rigging this. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll rig this guy real quick. We'll do a like a, a temporary, like a, a quick, um, you know, we'll, we'll stick him in Mixamo. We'll just do a placeholder rig for him just to see him animated, just to have fun on the stream here. All right, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Okay, so what I need to do is just grab... Oh. We'll fix it. We'll fix it, everyone. We're fixing it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. Oh, what a fun boy you are. Okay, we're going to get his... I need to fix this part, and then we're going to do his other arm. And it's going to be much smaller. That's his not good arm. All right, and let's go ahead and fix that up now. All right, and wireframe off. Hey, look what we got. We got a good boy here. A meat hammer. Let's add some veins to this guy as well. That looks all wrong in the right ways. Well, uh, Lunar Knights, what is your favorite creature you created so far? I don't... I don't know. Uh, I don't... I don't know if I have a favorite. Um, they're all they're all fun to make in different ways. Some of them are extremely frustrating for me um, because I know that behind the scenes, like the rigging process on on the certain ones, uh, was very frustrating. Uh, animations for certain ones are frustrating. Um, I don't think I have a favorite. I mean, I, I kind of like that fat, that big fat face taker I made earlier in the stream. Oh, hey, if you guys missed it earlier in the stream, in our merch shop we do have jackets and hoodies now, and the manufacturing. Uh, this is my proof to make sure that the. Um, I have to order proofs to make sure that the manufacturing is acceptable. So this is the proof I got for the coat, and I, I'm really happy with the quality. Um, the print looks great, and the material is very nice. The stitching looks good. There's you know, like there's no horrible issues. It, it looks fantastic. It looks great. Metal zipper. It's quite warm. It's very comfortable. It feels really nice. It's, it's not thin material. Um, and this is a large. It fits me perfectly. I think if I ordered medium, it would be too small, but the large one seems just right. Actually, I think I kind of like the, um, you know in Episode Prelude, there are those dogs? I mean, I, they don't give them an actual name, but those tripod dog things, um, I really like those. I think they're, they're fun. So I'm just going to give this guy another hole. This is a smaller hole for a smaller hand that's probably just going to, like, dangle around, you know what I mean? Um... Grab very quickly, give him an arm hole. This is Anatomy 101. Every arm comes out of an arm hole. You know, if you go to to anatomy school, uh, this is you learn you learn that it's basic. I you know I shouldn't even have to explain it. It's really simple. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I hate it. Uh, Micah, I need to get into 3D modeling at some point. I just don't have the time. Um, try Sculptress, you know, just, just for fun, just to, to see how you like it. I think it's, it's easy to use, uh, and it helps you without getting in your way. And again, you can, you can download Sculptress for free, anyone can use it. Uh, let's see here. Alright, that's looking like a pretty good armhole. I just want to... Yeah, let's do that a bit. There we go. All right. Let's give this guy his second arm, and then we're going to introduce more asymmetrical elements, like his legs need to be a little bit more asymmetrical. Actually, pretty soon we'll be able to... Uh, excuse me. Pretty soon we'll be able to rig this guy up. So we'll do a quick paint job, and then we'll rig him up, and I think that'll be fun to look at. This is going to be his weak arm. 
Uh, oh, Lunar Knights, your temps are in the high 90s. Yikes. I uh, hope that finishes up soon. The mine boss uh, in 3DS freaked me out. I had fun making that guy, but... Um, oh, man. The, the monster that you're talking about, Lunar Knights, like, that was a rigging nightmare. That guy has tons of arms. That was, it was, it took a lot of effort to, to animate and rig that guy, and it wasn't fun. It's not a fun part. Oops. Alright. This is his T-pose here. I've gone off a little bit. All right, here we go. Okay, we're going to extend it out just a little bit more, and then we're calling it it for his hands. I'll just quickly do a paint paint job test, and then we'll stick them stick them in Mixamo just to just to do a quick rig. Uh, it won't be the final version, of course. All right, and this is. Uh, another one of the face takers. I'm kind of thinking, like, what if... What if you, like, draped the face here? Like, you draped it over it, you know? Um, that would be pretty fun, wouldn't it? If it just sat on top, if a little face sat on top? That's something to consider. I'll think about it. That sounds fun. I like the sound of that. still need like finger definition so I'm going in I'm going in like this it's got a Muppet thumb here this is this is how Muppets it's got a Muppet thing going on and then let's give him another one it starts up here runs down like that. Okay, we're going to grab that, just drag that out a bit. And let's crease it a bit. Let's crease that. And we're going to crease that. Crease that. Crease that. Oops, a little too much there. Too much creasing. I'm going to pinch this one a bit. It's a bit too thick. I'm going to pinch the tips there, pinch the nibs. Uh, we're going to pinch this one as well. There we go. And then we'll grab it. And then let me just fix this up a little bit here. Looking all right. What do you guys think of that? Let's get some creases in there to add a little bit more detail. All right, let's smoothen that out. Grab this. And we want a little bit more of a, a uh, physical connection with this um, digit here. So let me build this up a bit more like that. Okay, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm feeling pretty nice about this. I'm feeling pretty nice. Okay, and we want to express a sense of an elbow, so let's go ahead and just grab this and move it on back. Drag that down a bit. 
Let's put some creases in here for some uh, ligament and tendon definition. I'm like speeding through this. You can tell I, I really want to, I really want to make this game as fast as I can. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at it without our wire frame. Okay, let's go ahead and fix up this crotch area. Uh, Carmilla, good to see you. Uh, how do I donate? Ah, oh, I, I uh, don't have... Um, someone asked me to turn on, like, donations in, in here, in the in YouTube. I don't know how to do that, but I'll... I'll, uh, I'll figure it out. Um, but if, you, if you'd like to contribute, uh, you can contribute via Patreon. I think that, that might be in the description for the video if you'd like to have a look. And if not, I'll post a link uh, now, but I, thanks for asking. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Knights of Me, that went from zero to unpleasant to look at very quickly. We all know our boy Toothpick was the favorite. Actually, I, I actually had a lot of fun making Toothpick. I really, yeah, I've got a special spot in my heart for Toothpick. All right, so here's 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 what's the deal, right? Um, here we go. You need you need asymmetry to make a creature look uncomfortable. Um, you need to have visual elements that make people look at it, and not, it's not like actively, but subconsciously. People need to look at something, and they need to ask themselves, why? Why, God, why does it look like that? What happened? And if, if that's the reaction that people have, then you've created a successful monster design. So that's usually what I aim for when I'm creating my monsters. I want people to look at that and go, why God? Why is this happening? Why am I looking at this? Why God? Why? Uh, and that's what I am for. In all seriousness, no, I would, I would, I would like to meet John Carpenter. Uh, and, and I would, um, I would just say thanks for making stuff that I like. I really like the stuff that you, you made and, um, Thanks for that, dude. That's real cool. Cool. The thing that you did was really cool, dude. Uh, quote me on that. That's what I would say to John Carpenter. Crease it. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and smoothen out our our creamy abs. Look at them abs. This is what you get. This is what you can earn from going to the gym. It's thick abs. Mmm. Six pack, right? Did I do a six pack correctly? Is that it? Oh, Kenneth, you bought the color changing mug. Awesome, thanks for that. Um, I was really excited. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get color changing mugs that I could I could sell on the shop. So I'm, I'm so excited I was able to get those. A portion goes towards Toothpicks College Fund. <laughs> Crispy, you go to the gym and that's how you look like um, when you step out of the gym. You must have great abs. You must work real hard on the abs. Okay, let's just hide the wire. Oh, see? That became very unpleasant very unquickly, I think. Very quickly. Alright, here's what we're gonna do. Um, so you see how he's thick on that side? We're, we're gonna stick with that theme. Um, we're gonna make this. We're gonna um, deslenderize this leg. So, sorry if the music's too loud. Let me just let me fix that up. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, we're gonna deslenderize that. Okay, so got our wireframe back up. Let's go ahead and grab grab this funny bit here. What's that all about? Okay, and here's how you do it, right? We're gonna use the scale tool. Um, throw the salmon here. Oh, you're literally noodling in sculptures right now. Nice, I hope you have fun. I hope you're having a great time. I, I think sculptures is really fun, even if you're just, you know, sort of playing around. Let's go ahead and make this thicker. OK, 
Okay, so uh, now I just want to fix up my... Um, I might all just use the inflate tool here. There we go. All the tools do something, you know, uh, differently. Okay, see, this is where I need to be careful here. This is where I, I'll, I'll get messed up. That will not uh, rig and animate well. So you have to be very careful there. Of course, you've got to remember for the pinch there. Don't let that mess you up. Um, this is where it's important to use the reduced brush so that gets fixed up. This guy's going... He does leg day, but only on the left side. You know what I mean? You guys know what I mean. Left side leg day is what it's all about. He's getting real thick here. Oh, we've done it, everyone. We've done it. Yeah, this is it. This is our friend. We're gonna sh we're gonna scale scale this down a little bit. Uh, we're gonna grab it. Okay. We're gonna scale scale this whole thing down just a little bit. Oh, that's fine. No big deal. We're cool. We're still cool. We're cool. All right, and we're actually going to reduce some of the, the muscle de definition here. And instead of making it look muscular, what we want to do is make it look um, gaunt and taut. So what I'm going to do is smoothen it out first, and then I'm going to cut in uh, with some creases. So we'll use our, we're going to save first. Okay, so we will use our smoothen tool now, so it's less muscular. See how that's working out for us? That's working out for us. Yep, we got less muscle definition. Good, 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 good. We gotta smoothen out that glute now. Okay, that ain't creamy anymore. Okay. All right, there we go. We're going to grab. Yeah, if anyone hadn't seen it, um, we do have color changing uh, mugs uh, that start black, and then when you put a hot beverage in there the uh, Silver Falls logo uh, appears from Color Changing. Uh, Row the Salmon. Um, I am struggling to figure out how to separate a lower and upper jaw to have a monster mouth to mess with. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, you sort of see how I'm extending, like, how I've done my mouths, you know, um, you just sort of draw a nodule on like that, you just keep extending that more and more and work around it, and that's how you can get, like, a lower jaw sort of thing, um, you know, but you'd have to rig it in, in, in your rigor of choice, you know, um, you know, if you use Blender or Maya or whatever. Um, you, you'd have to paint that on yourself. There are other rigging solutions. I, I'm looking into them now. I've seen a couple before. So here's what I think would look um, upsetting, I think. It's just a little bit more of a bump here would be upsetting. So I'm just going to crease this. So there we go. And we'll get some bone definition here with our creases. Gina say I would have, but it was already at a convention. Oh, wait, did you see... You saw John Carpenter at a convention? Ah, so lucky. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure all those people, they, they hear all day long, people telling them they love their stuff, you know. But I, I don't have anything else to say. I don't know them personally, you know. I, I can't be like, hey, how's your mom? You know, that'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Uh... Crease tool is really fantastic, isn't it? So there we go. We got a nice, some shin definition here. 
Okay, so we need to inflate this section a little bit. Got pinched a little too much. I'll turn this track up. I think people like this track. That's what I've, I've heard rumors people like this track. Uh, Ro, still familiarizing myself with tools. Uh, was messing with a prefab, prefab head, but I have a better idea how to approach a count. Nice. Yeah. Oh, you had invert on with small, um, with smooth and pull. Yeah. If you select a tool, if you select it twice, that invert gets clicked. I think. Uh, some sometimes it can. Maybe if you do the shortcut. I don't know. Sometimes the invert gets turned on automatically. Um, I'm sure there's there's something that causes it. Uh, to get selected, I don't know what it is, but it has happened to me a few times. Okay, so I'm just going to smoothen out my um, creases here a little bit. I want my creases to make sense. There we go. It's good to cr um, smoothen out um, your creases a bit, especially at the end points of your creases, um, just so it has a more natural look to it. So I want, I want this bump here to be more uncomfortable to look at. Um, Alorzo. Um, well, you've succeeded in that. Literally shouted, what the hell is this, several times when pulling through downstairs. Oh, thanks. I'm happy to hear that. That makes me really, makes me really glad. I am happy to hear that. Okay. Let's give him some, some ab creases. More of the ab crease there, ab crease there. Let's get that real separation going, um, and let's get this. Let's get it a bit lumpier, why don't we? And again, I, I really like using um, a tablet and stylus uh, because of the pressure sensitivity. And you know, when you have when you're working on real sensitive bits, it's important to work sensitively. So let's make this a lump like that. There we go. That's good. It's good and lumpy. Oh, the kind of lump that you really should ask your doctor about. That's what, sort of what I'm going for here. Okay, very... Yeah. Okay. There we go. There's our friend. I'm feeling pretty good about this. How are you guys feeling? How's everyone out there? How's everyone feeling right now? Everyone good? How are we all feeling today? I'm going to go over with a, um, a very quick, uh, let me just check if I need any any more definition. I think in terms of definition, we are good to go. This is a friendly boy. What a friendly boy. Okay, I'm going to do a, uh, just a quick optimizing pass for the reduce brush. So I'll turn off the wireframe. Let's just enjoy this fellow. We'll do a quick paint and then we'll quickly rig him up and mix him up. So I'm just going to um, look for spots that probably need some smoothing out. That's, that's pretty not nice to look at, is it? Yeah, we want to, we want a little bit more size disparity. That's what I'm thinking here. Just a little bit more. Here we go. Oh yeah, that, that's giving it that nice gaunt look right there. That's a real, that's a real slenderized leg, isn't it? Nice. Okay, I'm just gonna buff up this leg a little bit more. I just want it to be very clear. This is the good leg. Okay. Get a wireframe on. There we go. And again, I need to be careful with the pinch down there, so I will. Um, go back and fix that a bit. There we go. This is the good leg. Okay, let's go ahead and fix this real quick. Uh, light. Okay. 
We're looking good. We're looking good. All right. So what we'll do now is I'll save it as a new file again, since I will be doing a destructive process. I'm reducing the poly count now. So I'm reducing the poly count. The switch is actually pretty strong, so... This track is literally my ringtone. Which track? This one? The, one, the scary one that's playing now? Or, or Waiting for the Sun to Rise? Are you, are you talking about this one? This one, or... Or this one, Brave Star. This one's Brave Star. Uh, and this is Waiting for the Sun to Rise. I, I've actually played this at music clubs, uh, and people seem to really... This is the song that they shout at me to play. They're like, do that one again! Play... Play Waiting for the Sun. Oh, worth the wait in gold. Thank you, thank you. I am working on getting those on a streaming service, but I had to focus on getting a shop up first. So now I'll work on um, streaming services for the music so you guys can listen to the music however you like. Okay, so we've saved it as another file. I'm going to use the reduced brush now. All right, so we're at um, 417,000 triangles right now. Uh, I think the switch would struggle with that very, very much. I don't think the switch would be happy with me. So I'm reducing it to a level that uh, will be good quality that I know the switch wouldn't mind. And again, um, this is like the high quality asset. Uh, I will make an even lower quality uh, version of the asset. So when you're farther away from the monster, it will use the lower poly count model. I need to do a base level for up close where it looks pretty good. So I am at 327,000. And again, when you're reducing, it's good to think about which parts the player really, really won't see. The back, they're not going to see the back that much on these characters. So I generally take polygons out of the back and out of the butthole, um, because the players usually don't spend that, that long looking at the butthole, so it's fine to take trying to take polygons out of there. But you don't see, like what I just did there was a little too destructive. I took too much detail out of that. So I undo that. Okay, so I have my armholes. There's, wow, there's a lot of polygons right here. Okay. Uh, Gino's 8. Um, it was, it was at a convention and I was working. He had an indoor area. Um, he could smoke. And so I joined him so I didn't have to go outside to smoke. You got to have a smoke with John Carpenter? Are you serious? Uh, Luna Knights. Uh, my nephew was loving 3Ds and Ruby River. But when I explained they interact with each other, he was in awe. That's so awesome. Thanks for sharing my game with your nephew. That's so cool. I'm glad he's having fun. And it's the kind of game that, you know, there's meant to be, it's basically stress-free. You just play it and and relax as much as you well, it's stress-free unless you play Ruby River at night. I'm, I'm still waiting for Nintendo to finish processing Ruby River. We'll get chill mode out there. We'll fix, we'll fix it. And thanks. I really appreciate you all for understanding and, and for telling other gamers, you know, that the game launched with glitches, but that was the only way Nintendo could have launched, launched it, you know? Um, so I appreciate everyone being so patient and waiting for the patch. So, um... Yeah, we'll, hopefully we'll get the patch soon. We're just we're just waiting for the process. Poly be gone brush, <laughs> using that LOD model. Yeah, that's right. LOD, it's that's um, LOD. Um, be happy, you and me. LOD makes you happy. Oh, oops. Ah. Uh oh. Uh-oh, that was the freeze tool. I'm doing it again. How do I... How do I undo that? There we go. I don't know how to unfreeze is the problem. Don't... Don't hold that button. Okay. Is it Control-Alt? I don't know what I just did there and I don't like... It. Hold on, that's... That's freeze. I don't know how to undo that. Ed... I'll look up. I'll look up the guide later. Can I? Uh oh. Thank you. I'll do it later. So holding holding control uh, froze those polygons there, triangles as, as sculptors calls them. Okay. 
Ooh, I thought it froze for a second. A Lunar Knight's question, why was the reset of Gaiden and Ruby River disabled on old 3DS? Because it would crash. In On the original 3DS in Ruby River, if you leave the river, um, Unity will not release the memory. Unity refuses to release memory properly at all, anywhere. So um, Ruby River takes up pretty much the entirety of the memory that the 3DS has. So if you try to leave Ruby River on original 3DS, uh, Unity will not release the memory and it will crash. So that's why you can't exit the game on original 3DS. All right, we are at 185,000 triangles and dropping. See, I know the player won't be looking back here, so it's okay to take some polygons out of there. Take some more out of there. They're not using it, you know? Use it or lose it is, is what I say when it comes to polygons. Oh, we got real chonky legs, don't we? Whoa, these are the chonkiest. Ooh. Look at that. Hey, Nukatha, good to see you. I'll do your link code now. Let's just... Hey, you know what? Let's just flip it to a, like a fun looking... Let's do this red skin. This one's... Oh, that's kind of too metallic, isn't it? What about... This one. Ah, uh, let's just... Oh, this one's kind of fun to look at. Kind of hurts my eyes. I think I'm going back to this one. Uh, Nukatha, thanks for coming by. I'm doing your code now. There's multiple face takers, so I'm working on a, this. If you hadn't heard yet, I'm doing Silver Falls face takers. This was going to be a game that I was I was going to do in the future, a few years, but I need to get a game on the Switch very quick, so I'm doing face takers right now. Okay. Um, and your code, V-T-G-G-Y. We're going to paint this guy real quick, and then we're going to rig him up, and we'll see him do his little arm things, his fun little arms. Okay. Casa, E X M M V. Hope that's correct. Great. Okay. Let's see his knees. Don't need to have that. You know what looks like really harsh on on um, like certain certain games from like the PlayStation One era are characters' knees. Yikes, they did not have a lot of polygons. If you look at the Final Fantasy VIII remaster, which looks gorgeous, I think that looks fantastic. I really want to play the Final Fantasy VIII remaster. But if you look at the Switch um, um, eShop screenshots of Final Fantasy VIII remastered, you see Irvine's uh, knee, and it's like his knee consists of two polygons, and that's not enough. And it has there's a screenshot of him sitting down, and it looks rough. And I'm just kind of wondering why they couldn't change the models, like why they couldn't add more polygons to the knees. Um, because it looked rough. It's real rough. I would have. I personally would have done a model replacement. For your main characters, at the very least, like, okay, NPCs, your monsters, so what? Leave them. Your main characters, though, you, you can't increase the, the polygon count on your main characters? And we're looking at them the whole game. We have to see them sit down, and we can see that their knees are made out of two polygons. I think it's a little rough. Um, row, row, in 10, in Final Fantasy 10, when Titus puts his, I think it's Titus, which I hate, I'm going to say Titus, um, puts his hand on Yuna's shoulder, his arm bone breaks like two inches above his wrist to do it, but it's because it looks fine in the rest of... Oh, that's hilarious. I think I'm going to look for that. After the stream, I'm going to see if I can find that of Titus's arm breaking. No, I will not say Titus, because I don't want to. I'm going to say Titus, because I'm a big boy, I'm a grown-up, and um, I can say my video game characters' names however I want. I am a big, big boy. I can say Rattata or Ratata. Either way, I'll say it however I want, because I'm a big boy polygons on them fingers, on them hand sausages. Okay, I want to make sure I maintain the definition there, so I don't want to take too many out. I want people to see the, the muscular uh, definition there and the tendon definition. Here's not so important. I can take from there. I can take from there. We're at 56,000, which is still 
pretty high, but not, not the worst. If I can get closer to 50, I'm going to be happy with that. Let's... I can get close to 30, actually. I know that you can have a few enemies, if, if they're around 30,000, you can have a few on screen on the Switch, and it's, it's going to handle it all right. Um, but above that, it's going to be problematic. Okay, now I'll just start taking here. We're at 52 still. This is going to be tough now. If I can get lower than 50, I think I'm gonna, I'll be happy because this guy actually has more definition than, than I expected. His butt probably doesn't need those polygons. He, his butt's not using those, is it? Okay. That's looking all right. Oh, his foot hams have a lot of, uh, have a lot of polygons, don't they? I'm just going to take some polygons from his foot hands now. Big ol' hams down there. See, I don't want to lose the... It's, it's having too much detail is what makes it upsetting to look at, so I don't want to ruin that. Um, back of the knees. Yes, please. Polygon, please. I don't want to... I'm going to undo that. I want, I want all of that definition in that leg. I want all of that. I'm going to leave it. Um, this joint here, I can probably take some out of there. There we go. We're at 47. I think I'm going to call it. I don't want to lose... Any further definition? Yep, that looks faithful to me. That looks all right. This will run in the game engine. 40 is fine. Again, I'll use LODs so that it, it works better. Um, but his hands are really upsetting to look at. This thing's going to have a chunk of metal sticking out of it. Uh, so he'll probably be a, a face slicer offer. Pretty happy with that. What do you guys think of that? There's a little bit too much symmetry here. I'm just going to adjust that now. Grab and hopefully, okay. So it added a bunch of polygons. I'm just going to go to my options and turn that off. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. I know there's a quick way to do it. I'm just going to turn these off real quick and see if that does it. No, that did not do it. There is a way. There was a way to do it. I just don't know where it is. So it's not its not the program's fault. It's my fault. I don't know where that option is. So I'm just going to go back and reduce this area again. I want to get back to... I was at 47, wasn't I? There we go. There we go. Look, I think that's... I could probably take a little more here, right? Like this... The super orbitable, super orbital. I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying that. The super orbital ridge is not super important, so I'm just going to take a couple more polygons from there. It's not hugely important. You got to think about what matters to you. Is is the thing? It becomes an addiction. I think. You know how? Um, yeah, it is like an addiction because you're just like, oh, I can, I can get a couple, I can get rid of a couple more polygons. It's just a couple more, man. Just a couple more polygons. Um, you know, it's kind of like an eating disorder. Um, so you do have to be very careful. I'm going to stop. See, having discussed that, it's it's okay to stop. Just stop, you know? Because um, eventually, like, your family will, will come and have an intervention and just be like, we couldn't stop. I couldn't stop my, you know, my brother from... He just kept reducing polygons and suddenly there was nothing left of his skull. There was nothing left of it, you know? He just couldn't stop himself. He just kept reducing. He said he was going to quit, but, you know, that was a year ago. <laughs> Gina say it's Titus. Um, thank you. Thank you for backing me up on that. We're on the same team. You get it. You know, I don't want to hear this Titus. I don't want to hear that. All right, let's paint this bad boy. Then we're going to stick him in Mixamo, and then we'll just do a quick test rig. I think that'll be fun. Let's paint this fun fella. What a fun, fun boy. Wonderful. Okay. Yes. 
One man mispronounces the name in one commercial and Square just runs with it. Really? Is that why it happened? Uh, Alorso, I also prefer Titus. Titus sounds too much like the word tedious. I hear you. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I think it just sounds... It sounds funny. Teet is a funny word. Hey Morgan, good to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out. I'm doing your code now while I wait for my uh, thing to get set up for, for painting. Okay, here. Morgan, uh, what do we have? M O M O M A O H D. Generate. And this is for Karn and White Inside its Umbra. And I think we've done Karn for every game now. I think that's, that's it. Oh, uh, that's, that's for Morgan, the one that I just posted. Will Quadbo be playable in um, um, Guardians and Metal Exterminators DX? Um, if I were to bring Guardians and Metal Exterminators to the Switch, I would, I would add as many more monsters and playable characters as I could. So there's no promise, because there are three different face takers, at least, right now. There's at least three uh, face takers. So I would have to pick, you know, whichever one, whichever one uh, I think would be most interesting to add the most variety. But yeah, again, I, I currently don't have plans to bring Guardians and Metal Exterminators to the Switch because again, I don't want to keep giving you guys the same game over and over again. I want to give you something interesting and new. Um, so at some point in the future, we'll see if, if there is, you know, significant demand and uh, if people really, really want Guardians and Metal Exterminators on Switch, I would I would do at least four new tracks for missions. I would do new environments. I would want to add at least four new playable humans, which would mean at least four new playable monsters. At least. Bro the Salmon, you are joking, but I legitimately know a story like this where someone gets turned into a polygon via polygon reduction. Ooh, that sounds scary. But what for us who got screwed over with Guardians and Metal Exterminators who didn't have a new 3DS? Well, that is a good reason to bring Guardians and Metal Exterminators to the Switch. So you do have a good point. Yes, to you it is a new game. Well, okay, I'll, I'll put that on the book. Um, that is something to consider because I know there are a lot of people that didn't get to experience it. Same with Three Down Stars. Not everyone got to play that. Is this stuck? Is this stuck at 50%? I'm looking at it. I'm feeling kind of suspicious here. What's happening? Hello? Oh, I think I clicked out of it, and so it, it it wasn't updating the progress bar. Fantastic. Let's paint our let's paint our new friend. This is our new friend now. You know me, I like to start with a base coat. Uh let's see here. I think I'm gonna start with this base coat. Let's do this one. Okay, just a nice base coat here. Oh, oh! <laughs> this is the wrong and the right texture uh, to start out with. Oh, this is the wrong and the right texture. I'm just going to run through it. This is, again, just a base coat. You know, just starting out, starting out here. I'm going to switch stylus now. That was my high friction, low sensitivity. This one's low friction, high sensitivity. This is our friend now. This is our new friend. Hello. Ooh. I just don't like these clubbed, clubbed foot hams here. What a fun, fun boy. These are textures that I've created. Uh, I wanted a library of monster textures that I can share between the monsters because it helps give them a cohesive look. And there is a story reason why, you know, the monsters are all related. Um, so that's why I want a library of materials that they can share. But I do, uh, you know, I want to keep, I, over time I, I do create new um, textures for the monsters so I can keep, you know, at least creating uh, new looks that are interesting for the new monsters as well.
Is there, is there a shortcut button for this? No? Okay, that's fine. We're cool. We're still cool. So, yeah, you need the base coat just to make sure you get rid of all the blank gray spots. There's some there. Some on the fingers, pardon me. Okay. Is there like a more fun, like creamier one to look at? It looks much better once it has um, normal mapping applied to it. You can see like the bumps of the, of the flesh, you know? I think that one's fun to look at. Okay. I think our, I think we're good. I'm gonna just gonna go over these just in case. I think the base coat looks good now. We're good on the base coat. And again, the, the fingers tend to get blank spots. Let's, I'm just gonna do another pass here. And then my armholes. I want to make sure my armholes are fully painted. I'll, I'll go in there with black so I can uh, make sure that it's cavernous later on. Over my fingers. There we go. That's looking all right. Hey, this is a good start. Good start. Um, his one side looks thick enough to feed a family for a month. You think that looks delicious? Okay, that's, you can have it. That's all you. Uh, let's see. I apologize if I sounded nasty before. No, no, no offense taken. Um, yeah, I know that not everyone got to experience the new exclusive games. I, I know personally. Uh, let's see here. Oops, okay. Uh, so let's get some meat here. I want the... See, I created these... Um, especially for the face takers, because I want the face takers to have this fleshy, um, muscular look to it. Um, if I, if I tilt it, if I tilt it like that, no? It's kind of hard to control this. I need a better way to, to control the direction of this. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just test it. Okay. I had other brushes as well, but I lost them. So I, I need to get, get those brushes, um, back somehow. I need to find out where they went. Or just make new brushes. looking pretty good. One of them. There we go. Like that. That's it. There we go. Okay, we'll go directional on that for this bottom part here. Come on, I want it, I want it more randomized. Uh, flesh streaks now. So we're just going to um, size down. Maybe size up a little bit. There we go. So, something like that. Okay, and then um, I'm thinking some of this here. There we go. And that, that'll be a good transition between um, the uh, the the muscle striations, and the uh, raw flesh. So there we go. That's looking pretty good. There we go. That's looking all right. What do you guys think of that? How's that? How's that look to you? Hole can have can have that in there. That's it. You guys can name them whatever you want. These monsters. Well, there's only two games where um, creatures. Oh no, three now where uh, monsters have official, actual titles. And, th and that's because the characters in Silver Falls have sort of nicknamed that. Um, but in general, the monsters, you call them whatever you want. Um, so, um, 
these are there's there's multiple face takers. This is one of the face takers, but the, the, this monster is for Silver Falls face takers. But yeah, the games are there's Undertakers and Metal Exterminators, and those are the named monsters. And then outside of that, you call them what you want. Uh, Chris B, do you like the Never Ending Story? I do. I do like the Never Ending Story. If I had it um, on on like a a way to play it on my media player, I'd, I'd probably just play it in the background every once in a while. I think it's a fun movie to watch and listen to. Oh, this is... Ugh. All right, here's what we want to do now. Okay, so we have a different kind of... Um, so we have that central uh, flesh. Uh, and I just want to get some muscle striations here. Oh, yeah! What do you guys think of that? Yeah! I'm feeling it. Look at that. I'm really feeling it. Oh no, I'm doing the Shulk thing from Smash Bros. Can't be helped. Okay, see how that one's like muscly, right? That one's got the muscle. That one's got the muscle striations. Okay, I'm looking at the muscle striations. So I want the tips to be like a, a bloody mass. So I'll, I'll use this for the ends of the fingers here. I'm really feeling it. Oh no. See, I'm not doing that on purpose. That's just in my head now. Um, there we go. What a lovely, what a lovely boy. I'm, I'm actually really liking this now. The story ended, Ginoze, the story ended. Can I name it Ginoze? You can name this guy whatever you want. He'll be your best friend. Yep. Let's get that in there. Right, so here's the thing. I want this texture to stand out um, from there, right? Because now that sort of blends in a bit. Um, but I want this little, like, vestigial appendage to stand out, so I'm going to use now a different texture. Um, there we go. This one has less, less blood here, so I'll just use it here, just to help it stand out a bit. For these uh, orbital ridges, super orbitable, super orbital ridges. I'm not a doctor. There, so that's going to help that stand out just a bit. Oh, oh wow! He's he's a sad looking fella here. I'll I'll paint this uh, super orbital ridge as well. Oh, he's not happy. That helps those. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. You know what? Let's give this thing some color, too. All right, so we're going to go and paint these, his abs, his ab lines, as it were. There we go. Give him some ab lines. There we go. What do you guys think of this fun fellow so far? How's, how's he doing? How do you like your new friend, your new boy? Looking dope. Thanks, Chris B. I'm calling him Quago, a.k.a. Swagger, since he always walks with a bump. Well, he's got some swagger there. There's no arguing with that. I'm really feeling it. I'm really feeling it now. Oh, Chris B., you know what? I was just thinking that about the same time as you. He got the real Bandersnatch energy, doesn't he? That guy just ruined my day. Um, I'm a big fan of, of uh, Code Veronica, so... Um, yeah, I thought he was he was a really cool enemy. He was one of my favorites. All right, let's go ahead and save our progress. That's looking good. We've got some muscle striations. I'm kind of thinking that the big leg here should have some muscle striation as well. So I'll do this drier looking flesh. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to control the angle on that. I don't fully understand. I 
I don't fully understand how to control it yet. I can't control my power. I don't know how to control my power. Get some vertical striations on there. Oh, that looks all right. That looks all right. Okay, I'll go back to the uh, bloody... This part now. Okay, this will be good. Yeah, we can blend blend all of that together now so it sits nicely. Okay, and then this leg. Um, what texture did we use for that one? Do we use do we use this one? Is that it? Looks like me going to the gym after COVID. Yikes. Ouch. Well, I guess this guy looks like all of us. <laughs> Uh, going in and finally getting back in shape after COVID. So we want our gross little, like, uh, I don't like looking at it, honestly. Honestly, I don't like looking at it. Um, here's what I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking go pale. Go pale on the toes here. That, I think that's too pale. Uh, we'll use... Uh, let's try this one. Just a little bit on the toes here. Because I gotta imagine, like, he's dragging these things through the dirt, right? So the dirt would, like, scrubbing his, his little um, foot ham nubs, dragging them through the dirt would probably clean them, you know? So that, that's what I have in mind right now. All right, um, here's what I'm thinking though. I need a little bit more of this going on. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the strength here. i zoom that out. Okay, and then um, potentially I could have like a, his, because he's supposed to take people's faces, right? Potentially, I could have it sitting up top there. We want to have a bloody spot just up here for his face mount, as they call it in the business. Okay, I'll overlay, overlay that with some blood texture a bit, just to get it a little bit more organic looking. That will help our uh, muscle striations look a little bit more organic as well. I'm, I'm so happy with how this turned out. Yep, I'm, I'm really feeling it. I said it again. Uh, disappointed everyone. Oh. Uh, uh. This is it now. This is it. We've done it, everyone. This is our friend. This is our new friend. <laughs> uh, this is the power of Mona Blender, yes! This is the Sculptress's power! Oh, I need to paint some black inside of my armholes. There we go. Just need them to be cavernous in there, you know? Well, I don't know if I should... Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. Because I know that Unity's lighting is not going to be precise enough to, to properly um, cast shadows in here. It's going to light bleed. 
So again, I'm, I'm doing this because I understand the game engine um, has some quirks and light will bleed into there. So I am manually painting um, the color black into there and I'll be creating the metallic map so that it does not reflect light in the armhole. So that's just a design consideration here. Right, I'm kind of feeling that that's good enough for that one. Very good. Just a little more down here. All right, let's go ahead and save. <laughs> you have an interesting friend. Technijade, hi, thanks for coming, welcome. Uh, if, if you have the Silver Falls games, uh, if you have White Inside It's Umbra, we're distributing a new exclusive character today, that's Karn. Um, so if you enter your code linker for anyone that's new to the stream, welcome. Um, and we are distributing a new character today. So I'm almost done painting this guy, then we're going to just chuck him in um, Mixamo really quickly, just for a quick, uh, just for a, a quick prototyping uh, rig. Um, but I'll have to create a custom rig for this guy because his He's pretty special. He's a big special boy. I painted on the arm just a little bit. I'll undo that. Yeah, if I was using Unreal, maybe I wouldn't have to paint in here like this, because Unreal is a real game engine that actually works. Uh, but I don't use a real functional game engine. I use Unity. So I don't understand, um, I don't understand memes all that much. I, I don't super get it. Um, I tried making some and I posted them in our Discord and people said that I got it. I understood memes, but I, I didn't understand memes. I just, I made some, uh, and they said that I got it. I don't know what I did correctly, but isn't there a meme where there's a picture of of Ellie from The Last of Us, and then people say name a character that suffered more than her, um, or something like that, and it's kind of like, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe any developer that's had to use Unity, I think, has suffered more than Ellie. That's just me, though. That's just me saying that. I'm confident in saying Unity developers suffered more. trick to this. Okay. I want to... Yeah, I think I'm going to call it. I think I'm going to call it now. Because um, I know that, like... Okay, the player's going to see a lot of that. I know that. Hold on. Let me just get like a little bit there. I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm happy with that. What do you guys think? Oh, Luna, do you have to go? Thanks for hanging out. Um, it changes the sculptor's blade to horror mode. Yeah, we got it. We're there. A great stream. Um, take care. Uh, go be go be a dad. Go do your dad duties. We'll see you next time. We'll see you in the in the Discord soon. See you, Luna Knights. I'll just put some blood in here. Um, because you know, like he's he's grabbing, he's taking faces, right? name of the job, isn't it? Um, so I'm just going to make it a little bloody here. There we go. Taking faces, isn't he? Alright. So he's going to have a blade in that hand. You'd probably be able to shoot that with your weapons. Memes are just about understanding a reference or a joke. I can confirm that the Ellie meme exists. <laughs> The Moose God demands more memes. Uh, IDKY Nintendo loves Unity Engine over Unreal. I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, I I dedicated uh, the entirety of my adult life to learning Unity when I should have learned Unreal. So that's my fault. And unfortunately, at some point in the future, I will have to learn 
um, the entirety of Unreal. So I'll do that in the future. Hey, great! We got a we got a really nice friend here. Awesome! I'm so excited about this. It's gonna stick him in Mixamo, and we'll just get a quick a quick rig for him to test it. This is very fun. All right. Nice taker. This is the third one. Do you guys want to see the um, the first one? Yeah, let me... I'll, you haven't seen the first one. I did that one just um, not on stream. Let me just save these. Oh, oh my god, this... Take her three. All right. And I'll open a uh, face taker one, which you haven't seen yet. Face taker one. Yep. We'll just have a quick. We'll just have a quick look at him. I'm still working on it. I have. I still need to finish the paint. The paint isn't done yet. Um, that's because Unreal games usually don't run well on the Switch, uh, plus they usually look ugly. They're pretty heavy. I know that Unreal runs heavier than Unity. Um, if you learned Unreal, then we would never have gotten the absolute gems that you put on 3DS. Hey, thanks, Richard. I appreciate that. I really, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, um, because it, if I if I'd used Unreal, I, I wouldn't have been able to make those 3DS games. Um, so this is. Um, uh, face taker number one so he, he actually dangles a flesh bulb so it'll be a flesh bulb it's not modeled on because i want you to be able to um shoot it a certain way and then you can knock the flesh bulb off and then it'll fall off and it'll just roll around in the game so this face taker has a flesh bulb that sits there and it stretches the skin of the person whose face it has taken it's stretched over the flesh bulb so that will be in there in game so this is uh, one of the the face takers. So this is face taker number one. He's got these fun fun hand hand friends. Um, he's got these fun foot friends as well. Um, again, I'm still painting this guy. I'm still working on it. You know, there's it's it's not finished yet. So um, yeah. So that's that's got a, a he's going to dangle his flesh bulb there. And then we'll just again we'll go back and have a look at our face taker that we did earlier in the stream for anyone that missed it. So this one is face taker number one, uh, and this one is face taker number two. I'll just go ahead and turn off my air conditioner. Oops. Oh, our beautiful friend! I missed you. I, I already missed him. Okay, this is our beautiful friend. So this guy will have a, a face flap. It'll have a bunch of skin and it's stretched over. It's going to be stretched over the area here. And these little hands are little claspers and they're going to stretch the skin out and it's going to hold the face over um, its, its face spot. So this is going to be <laughs> Richard Olaudi Chunk. Um, yes. <laughs> The player's height comes to about here, so he's he's gonna be big. He's uh, out of every single enemy that's been in Silver Falls so far. I think he's gonna have the most HP. Like this is just a big, big boy. Um, he's going to have uh, a couple human teeth dangling in there. So his deal is he wants to jump on you, and then he wants to give you a big old, big old kiss. Oh, I'm not done painting. You can see I have a I, my base coat didn't cover the whole thing. So I still have to paint this guy. You know, I have to paint black on the inside as well. So I'm still painting this guy. Well, you know, I'll, I'll work on that um, out of the stream so it's not boring or anything like that. So that is our, that's number two. And then again, um, just as a reminder now, we'll have a look at face taker um, three, which we just finished. And then I'll uh, set up a temporary rig and we can see what he looks like in Mixamo. He's a healthy boy. Yep, and this is the, the fun boy. He's actually significantly smaller than the other two, and he's going to have a large shrap of metal jammed in his hand, and he's going to use that to take your face. Take it right off. This is a smaller friend. He's going to be the fast one. This is the fast face taker. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and open up... Uh, 
also put a mix mode. And we're gonna upload our wonderful friend. What a nice friend. Okay. We're just gonna hope um, uh, Mixmo's auto rigger can work. I have been looking into other auto riggers as well. Um, I bookmarked them and I'm hoping I didn't close them because I would, I would, I need to be able to auto rig uh, more body part types. Uh, and if not, I'll just manually, I'll just manually rig in Maya. You know, that's life. Okay, uh, upload a character. Let me upload my file here. Face Takers. So again, the, the, the next Silver Falls game that's coming to the Switch is Silver Falls Face Takers. Um, this stream, as I've officially announced it, it, it was not even announced before. Um, and it's uh, going to be launching much sooner rather than later. I'm trying to finish this within three weeks or so. All right, so... Where is our... Can I export this guy? Wrong button that I have pressed. Uh, face take... Oh, I put him in the wrong spot. That is what went wrong. He is not in the right folder. Okay, we have face taker three. And we're going to hope... AccuRig was one I was looking into. Thank you. Thank you for, for for typing that in. I was looking it up. I bookmarked it the other day, and I think I closed the tab. Uh, he looks like Meatwad from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> uh, Delta, uh, well, I have Unreal games on my phone, and they run very fine. My friend kind of tried remaking Mario Odyssey and in Cascade Kingdom with the waterfall, a $300 phone had about 30 FPS. Wow, that sounds nice. That sounds really cool. We gotta take this tick box off. You guys can see that symmetry tick box. That's gotta go away. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put the chin there. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah. Hold on, wrists. Good luck. Good luck, auto rigger. God. Godspeed, Mixamo. Godspeed to you. There's no way. There is no way. There is no way. You want to place bets in the chat? I'm not into gambling, but there is no way this is going to auto rig. There's a 0% chance. Um, yes. Uh, I gotta, I'm going to open a tab with AccuRig again right now. Thank you for reminding me before I forget it. AccuRig does, like, non-human characters as well, doesn't it? I think I may have downloaded... I, I do have Character Creator. I purchased Character Creator from Real Illusion, and it turned out... Um, it it was very heavy, and it didn't fit the workflow for my Silver Falls games. But for future games, if this if this Switch's um, successor is significantly stronger, um, then no way, you guys. Wow. It basically did it. His arm there didn't... His arm didn't turn out... Uh, his arm... His, his small arm didn't turn out great. Oh, you know, but it is technically correct. It's technically correct. You know what? I could actually use this as a starting point. So I could load this into Maya and fix it up. And that would... That's, that's it. That's our boy. That's him. All right, what can we make him do? What's happening? This actually isn't bad. He loses his little arm. Uh, let's see. Man, I love Cascade Kingdom. I'll have to look that up. I'm going to type that in now. I've not heard of it. Cascade. Cascade Kingdom. I feel like someone's uncle, right? And I don't know what anything is. I don't know. People keep talking about things that I've not heard of before. I feel like I'm someone's uncle. The first time I heard that song, I literally put my controller, put down my controller and cried because for whatever reason, it hit me really hard as a good song. Which song? Cascade Kingdom? Is that, is that what that is? Uh, 
Tecna, Jade, kind of wished could get the games on 3DS, but they weren't taking PayPal at the time. Ah, I'm sorry you weren't able to get the games on 3DS. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get um, new games on the Switch as soon as possible. And if there is significant demand in the future, if, if people really, really want them, I'll, I'll look at which of the 3DS games I can bring to the Switch as an HD remaster. But again, it, it really depends on if people really, if there's significant demand for it. Like I've said before, I, I really want to bring new experiences to people. I don't want to keep recycling stuff. You know, I don't want to be lazy and just keep selling remasters and, and ports. Look at our happy boy. This is the happiest boy we've ever seen. I kind of like the idea of keeping its arm close to his chest like that, like, like it's aching. I actually really like that too. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll just download that. Where, which one was that? Does anyone remember what that was? It was this one. Uncle Jarrell. I am, I am somebody's uncle. <laughs> okay. This is what we were looking at, right? So here's, here's what we got. Here's what we got. I'll see if you flip it. Let's see what happens. Let's mirror it. It didn't... That actually looks okay. Because it's kind of pinched in there. Okay, and then I'll just fix the rig so it, it works a bit better. Um, so you can change the arm height. Oh, hey! Okay, I like that. Um, let me see here. That one's up. So I'm going to... I might... How, how low can I lower that? Yeah, that's pretty good. This looks like it's resting on its leg here, because there is going to be a big chunk of metal in his hand. So I like that. I'm going to raise the energy level just to see what it looks like. I'm going to reduce the energy level now. See, this is supposed to be the fast one, though, so I'm going to raise the energy level up. And here's what I do, right? See, there's like 212 frames. That takes up quite a fair bit of data. So what I do is I actually speed up the animation heaps, which reduces the keyframes, and then I let the Unity game engine interpolate between frames. So it's still running the animation, you know, one frame a second. It's very smooth, but it's interpolating, which um, cuts down on the memory overhead because now the animation takes less memory. So I've done that. All right, let's adjust the character arm space. Okay, so that one brings that arm in. Yeah. Okay. So right now the animation consists of 24 frames. And so what I'm what I'm doing is um, I can get Unity to to interpolate the frames so they blend seamlessly. That's why I'm not worried uh, whether or not this um, is seamless or not. And that's an optimization technique. So I just want to give it a few more frames, so it's a bit a jumpy, and I'll let Unity interpolate the frames. There we go. Let's give it that much. And I know we're working with Switch. Switch is actually a very good console to develop for, so I'm very happy about that. Okay. Cool. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. We're good. We're good. We're good. So Face Takers is the next game that we're going to see come out. Yes, Face Takers is the next game that's coming out. So were, were you here, Richard, when I was explaining it? If not, I'll explain it again so that anyone here that missed it earlier can can hear it. I'll go back to the first guy. I really like the first guy, but I'm super, I'm super not looking forward to uh, creating the rig for this guy because I know it's going to be difficult. Um, that's life. That's part of the job. Part of the job is is working with complicated character rigs. That's part of the job. It's my least favorite thing is is the rigging. Oh boy, I don't like rigging. Uh, and again, he's going to have a a flesh bulb, and the flesh bulb will have a character's face skin stretched over it. So this is one of the face takers. Uh, Raiko, it takes me a while to make a character. I hear you. It's time consuming. What a fun boy. Uh, uh, let's see. Make him do a Fortnite dance. Okay. We have a request in the chat. Let's see. I don't I don't know. 
I bet you Mixamo doesn't have the Fortnite dance. What's it called? Toothbrushing? This is close to it, right? This is not even close to the Fortnite dance. This is nowhere close. That's not the Fortnite dance. <laughs> all right. This is the quality content. I know you all come here for quality content. And this is what you're looking for. Right? Am I right? Am I wrong? How do I move that? Oh, I need a middle click. This. This is the quality content you've been asking for. Let me zoom in. Zoom in and enhance. They had a big dumb lawsuit. Oh, I see. So we're, we can't do the Fortnite dance. We can't do the toothbrush. Um, but we do have this. <laughs> Look up default dance. Okay. Oh no, there's, mm, bummer, nothing. Flossing. <laughs> also, oh yeah, EGSD would probably have their dances copyrighted, come to think of it. Locking hip dance. Uh, imagine seeing someone's face on that thing dancing in the forest. Boy, that would be a horror game. Holy crap. Imagine being lost camping and all of a sudden you see this bad boy breaking out those moves. It'd be kind of sick. It'd be kind of sick, honestly. Nintendo learned after the Wii U when indie developers wanted to develop for that system. It was the first time we've seen from a um, Nintendo console. Mr. Iwata really was supportive of the indie developers. I wish I could have been um, working in the industry um, when Iwata was was uh, there. It would have just been an absolute, absolute honor. Gagman style. Gangman? Gangman style? Gangman? Gagman? What's it called? Gag... Gagnum? Gang... Hey! You've asked for it. Dream Pillet, this is the quality content that you come here for. Uh, <laughs> so I'm in Maya, I'm going to um, adjust his um, rig. His leg wasn't perfect, but it was very close. His arm's not perfect, but it's very close, and that's easy to fix. So I'll be adjusting that in Maya later on. But I'm very happy we have a good starting point. Um, so here we go. It is there. <laughs> this boy be popping. <laughs> All right, what else? What, what else? You know what? I think Thriller's in here, actually. Hey, hey, what we got? Oh, he's going, he's going off screen here. Do the one, you know, the, do the part, do the part that people like. Everyone likes that part. Look at our face taker friend. His little arm! Did you see his little arm? <laughs> you guys saw his little arm meet his little way. What's do the do the with the clap overhead? You know, everyone knows what the. Why does he go off screen on this one? That's tough to keep track of him. There was a mod for Sonic Frontiers that made um, Giganto Boss do meme dances. Nice, very nice. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm gonna look that up. Um, yeah, okay. So I'll explain. Um, I'll explain face takers for anyone that hasn't uh, that wasn't here earlier in the stream. By the way, we have our Maverick Demus mug available on the Sun Grand shop. So if you want to hop over, I th the link might be in the description. Who knows? These are only like I think they're eleven bucks, ten, eleven bucks, something like that. Um, and I think if you're in the state, shipping's probably only five bucks or so. So we also have the color changing mugs. Um, they start black when you put a hot beverage in them. Uh, it changes color, and then the Silver Falls logo shows up. I'm working on a few other mugs as well. You know, da -da 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 -da. So, uh, what Face Takers is, is it takes place just before Three Down Stars. So it's around the same time as Three Down Stars. Uh, let me check my audio levels here. No, we're, I think we're audio level is fine. Um, let me let's just put on some chill music. So, 
So in Silver Falls Face Takers, which is coming to the Switch, um, hey, he did it. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's, he's got his little arm. Okay, make him dab. Uh, sorry, I don't think that would have to be a custom animation. I don't have a dab for him. I mean, this one's kind of close. It's not even close to dabbing. It's not even close. <laughs> Look at him go! Look at our little friend! Look at our boy! Our beautiful boy! grown so much <laughs> he's come so far um okay so silver falls um <laughs> he's only been alive for like two hours yep technology is beautiful you're right dream pillar the world the technology has given us such beautiful things and this i think this is one of them <laughs> okay so i'm trying to tell you about silver falls face takers um, so in face takers Every time you start playing, you are given a random character. So you have a random stat spread, you have random skills, and a random items in your inventory. So you have a daytime segment, you have a couple minutes to scavenge during the daytime, then it switches to sunset, you get to scavenge a little more. You get to organize your skills during the sunset time, and your inventory, you go into your inventory box, and then uh, when it comes nighttime, you have to face a wave of enemies. So if you defeat the enemies, you get some rewards like weapons, then it become, begins another day cycle. Uh, but for each enemy wave, the game gets increasingly more difficult. So eventually you'll just get killed. Eventually you won't be able to survive the enemies. And you're trying to just defeat as many enemy waves as possible to get increasingly better rewards. So when you die in the game, when your character dies, you are given a brand new uh, protagonist to play as. So your previous character dies and their body gets left there in the forest wherever they died. When you get your new character, they'll have new, it'll be a new character with random clothes, random visuals, again, random skills, random stat spread, and random starting items. If you find your character's, your previous character's dead body, depending on how many waves they survive, you'll be able to scavenge more items. And even if they, you survive just one wave, you'll be able to collect a skill memento. So the skill memento, if you have that in your inventory, it'll ha it'll equip you with a skill. So it's important to, I mean, it's, it's kind of awful, but you could kill a bunch of campers on purpose just to collect their mementos, and then you can have a bunch of skills on your good character. Um, but the difficulty is that when you die, if you have skill mementos on you, you lose them. So the way that you keep items is each time you defeat an enemy wave, you, are given one safety slot. So a safety slot is an item slot where if you die, if an item is in your safety slot, it'll be sent back to your storage. So you won't lose that item. So you have to try to defeat as many enemy waves as possible so that you can protect your good items. So you don't lose your good items. And that way you'll get, still keep collecting rewards um, by defeating the waves. You get rewards like new weapons, um, armor, and then when you die, um, hopefully you ha put your good items in your safety slots, you're given a new character, and then maybe that character will randomly just have really good stats and good skills, and they'll just randomly be better than the other characters you had. And then you try to defeat as many enemy waves as you can again. So that's the idea of Silver Falls Face Takers. There is a little bit of story, but it's not heavy on story, because every single character that you play as, it's implied that they die. Nobody survives fighting the face takers. Eventually the face takers become too powerful and they overwhelm you. And it is going to be um, much darker than any other Silver Falls games in terms of the horror. Because when you go to scavenge um, the deceased bodies of your previous campers that you play as, their faces will have been taken. And then this guy on screen will be wearing the face of your previous character. So good luck with that, have fun. Rashad Z, as a judge on Dancing with the Stars 10, <laughs> thanks, uh, Micah, so it's a roguelike. Well, I don't, 
I don't personally enjoy rogue likes, um, and I'm not following any formula. I'm not drawing any inspiration from uh, rogue likes. So you guys can call it whatever you want. It doesn't bother me, but I am not drawing any inspiration from rogue roguelike games. Um, I don't really enjoy them that much. I've played a couple, um, and I, I just didn't enjoy them. Everyone likes different kinds of games. I mean, I had fun. I played it with a friend, so we played a couple hours, and yeah, it was fun. I, I had fun, but a roguelike isn't the kind of game that I would go out of my way to play. Um, if a friend um, is over and wants to play a roguelike, yeah, I'll play that with a friend. I wouldn't play it on my own. There. Uh, Raiko, I like how you're making this feel like a Fire Emblem game, but with no option to turn off permadeath. <laughs> he can't stop laughing at that anime. You know, we're going to download this one. We're just going to download the animation. <laughs> we're downloading it. We're keeping it. <laughs> TechnoJ, not going to lie, that's pretty metal. So there's going to be different... No, thanks. There's, there's going to be different face takers, as you saw. So this is one of them. Um, and they'll all be... I want to improve the combat system uh, in Episode Prelude and Three Down Stars HD. So this game um, is going to be the most combat-heavy Three Down Stars game we've seen. And when I improve the combat for this game, I'll be able to port those changes back into Three Down Stars HD and back to Episode Prelude. Enemies will be more interactive this time. For example, like um, this face taker will have a flesh pulp, and that flesh pulp will have a face on it. You'll be able to shoot it and interact with it. This guy will have a metal thing um, sticking out of his hand, um, and you'll be able to shoot that out of his hand. So he'll be very strong. He'll be a rushdown enemy. If you shoot the metal out of his hand, then he'll deal less damage to you. Uh, Dream Pillar, I'm not that attracted to the roguelike concept, but Noita blew my mind. I'll type that into my search engine. It's not my search engine, it's Google, you know. I don't own it, you know. Uh, I'm gonna type it in now so I can look it up later. Noita. Okay, I'll look that up. Whoa, can you believe, can you believe it's been four hours? Wow. Well, um, cool. So that's, that's our guy. Let's open up our other guy again. So the, he'll take a while to rig. He's got all sorts of stuff going on. He's, he's a busy fellow. Um, he's kind of dancing to the music, isn't he? He's dancing to the music. Technojade, um, I wouldn't even be mad dying. Well, that's the idea, is um, by dying, you're actually helping the next characters. So you actually could use a bunch of campers as fodder. You could, you know, start up and then just let a bunch of your characters die so that when you do get a camper that has a good stat spread that you really like, or maybe they look cool, you know, because their their visuals will be randomized. They'll have different clothes, different hats they can wear. Um, when you find a character that you really like, then you'll go and you'll um, farm all of the skill mementos from the other campers that have died. So that's the idea of face takers anyway. Um, but really, it's, it's an organic way for me to communicate this is a dangerous cryptid, and it's actually killed a bunch of visitors that have gone missing. So there are different ways to express that. In storytelling, you can have characters say, oh, a bunch of people have gone missing, oh, it's so dangerous. Or you can let people play as those characters that have gone missing. And this is an idea to show you that Whoa, a bunch of people did go camping in Silver Falls, and a bunch of people did die. Um, you're, you're at a significant risk when you have a series like Silver Falls where there's so many characters, and people get very attached to characters. I know, because I'm a gamer, and I love my video game characters. Uh, and if someone kills your video game character, you're going to get very, very angry, and generally people will not forgive you. I, I heard people are unhappy with The Last of Us 2. Um, I've not played it, but I heard they did things that were unforgivable. People are very angry. Like, if somebody killed Claire Redfield, I wouldn't ever touch a Resident Evil game again. I'd be very angry. So that's... I understand that. So I know that I can't just kill off um, Silver Falls characters willy-nilly, even though there are characters that die, because there are characters that deal with death. Uh, but it's unrealistic to say, look, there's a bunch of these dangerous creatures going around, and 
nobody is getting killed by these dangerous creatures. So by making Silverfall's face takers, this is organic storytelling. This is letting the player experience, oh crap, these creatures actually are dangerous and they are killing people. It also is a, a form of power scaling to show, hey, like these, the people that live in Silver Falls are kind of powerful. Um, if if they can fight all these monsters and not get killed, whereas you have these out of towners that are not that didn't grow up in Silver Falls, so they're not familiar with this kind of thing. If random people show up in Silver Falls, they're probably going to get killed, and so that's the organic storytelling I'm going for with Face Takers. So is this like a run and gun, Raiko? No, this is going to have a battle system um, that's going to be extremely similar to uh, Silver Falls Three Down Stars and Episode Prelude. So it's not a run and gun. It's you can think of it like a third person action game, um, a third person you know where the camera's over the shoulder. Anoita is basically a Falling Sands physics simulator turned into an actual game. Well, that sounds really cool. Uh, that was one of the more bold plot points in Silent Hill 3, for those who know. Yeah, Ro, you're absolutely right. And it, it makes sense. What happens there makes sense. And it's not that we were, you know, uh, I, I won't talk about it further. I don't want to uh, spoil it. So um, I'm just going to look for some more music that this guy can dance to. Uh, what do we got? Here we go. We'll just... Okay, we'll probably wrap up the stream soon. It's already been... It's... Oh, we're past four hours. So, yeah, we'll, look, we'll hang out. We'll chat. Um, we'll relax. Um, we'll laugh. Have a, have a good time. Um, yeah, we'll just... <laughs> we'll... Yeah, let's just hang out a little bit uh, before we wrap up the stream. Oh, he's slimy. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like that. Oh, he's got a head vein right there, too. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I didn't play it, but my friends are pissed about The Last of Us 2. I heard about what happens, and I have no interest in The Last of Us 2 personally. Uh, it's not the kind of story I like to um, enjoy. It's not, the, they, they're not the kind of characters that I like spending time with, um, so I, I have no interest in The Last of Us 2. Uh, Micah, I don't care for roguelikes uh, either, but Slay the Spire was an excellent exception. It's a roguelike that's also a deck builder, like a card deck builder? That sounds fun. Um, I, don't, I don't even play digital card games, but I enjoy it. I'm gonna type that out and look for it. Slay the Spire. I'll look, look that up. Slay the Spire, I'll look that up. Um, Last of Us tries to inject personal politics into the game, which you should never do in a game, in my opinion. Absolutely, I 100% agree with you, Alorzo. The absolute priority, and really the only priority you should have in your game, is to entertain to give good entertainment to people. I do not care what your reasoning is. I don't care, I don't want to hear it. Do not put your personal politics in video games. Your job is to make something entertaining for people. Don't mess that up. Um, it is not a platform for your stroking your ego or for pushing your uh, politics or personal beliefs on other people. Your job is to entertain. And if you're not going to make that your priority, then you are a rotten game developer, and you deserve to be punched in the eye, I think. Oh, Raiko, I need to get Episode Prelude, but I am building up the rest of my Wii U collection first. Yeah, you know what? Prelude will be there for ages and ages. Just focus on the stuff that's going to be hard to, hard to get, you know? Um, Prelude will be there for years and years and years. And I am working on an update for Prelude as well. See, while while working on this game, I actually am working on the up, update to Prelude simultaneously because it's the same game framework. It's the abstraction framework. Um, it just felt like they didn't respect the characters at the end of the day. Crispy, I, I know where you're coming from. I absolutely know where you're coming from. 
It's like how in um, Resident Evil Vendetta they turned um, Rebecca Chambers into a damsel in distress. And I think I stopped. I think I stopped watching the movie uh, once I realized that Rebecca was a damsel in distress. And I'm kind of saying like, at 16 she was a prodigy, and she was on—is it Bravo Team that she was on? Um, and she survived two zombie outbreaks in a row. Like, you're gonna tell me that character is a damsel in distress? I don't think so. Um, you know, that's just me. I'm gonna—I'm going to rage about Resident Evil characters all day long if you let me. So don't let me. Um, the problem with The Last of Us Part 2 is not so much killing of a certain character as much as how the killing was written into the story. It was not a fitting character conclusion or character arc. Yeah, bad decision, I hear you. Uh, Dream Pilot, I kind of spoiled myself Last of Us 2 and I understand why some are pissed, but I have to respect taking such a bold direction. A friend who's a fan of the original loved it. I'll have to play it to make up my mind. Yeah, if you enjoy it, you know, um, I don't think anyone should criticize you. If you enjoy it, absolutely, you know. that's If it's something you like, then don't let people turn you off from it. Um, yeah. I just don't like when my characters that I like get mishandled. Uh, let's see. Uh, one day it would be interesting to see a rigging video, even though I know you might go crazy doing it. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can do that in the future. It's so boring. It's so boring, and I'm afraid I might cuss on stream, and I might say some really bad things, because it's not... It's frustrating. It's, it's, it can be very frustrating. Um, sometimes when you rig, you, def you paint, you know, um, the bone influences in Maya. You save it, and then you like, test it, and it turns out Maya just messed up the entire um, rig, and it's like it's ruined all the bone influences that you've painted. Um, and it, usually I have choice words at that point. Um, but people told me that Blender is better for rigging. I'm going to look into Blender, and I'm going to look into AccuRig as well. Uh, when I heard news about The Last of Us Part 2, I'm going to put on some chill music now. We're winding down. We're winding down the stream here. Uh, let's just hang out, everyone. Um, when I heard news about The Last of Us Part 2 winning the Game Awards, that made uh, me make a meme RPG based off a group of game designers trying to combat other work game developers. That sounds really fun. That sounds super cool. Never made a prototype so fast. Did you actually launch it and have it playable online? Araiko, this is why I love Nintendo. They don't do that stuff in their games. Glad to hear that you agree with that. Makes me happy to be a Silver Falls fan. That's... Well, that was the... my promise to you guys. Like, I... The most important thing to me as a game developer, is you make a promise. Every game developer makes a promise. Every game makes a promise. And that game's job, and the developer's job, is to follow through on that promise. And the Code Linker's promise, why all of the games are connected through Code Linker, that's my promise to you that I will not disrespect the characters that you really like. I will not abandon those characters, and I won't disrespect them. I'll treat those characters the way that they should be treated. Uh, and that's that's my intention with Code Linker. Um, and I, so far, I think, I think I'm following through on that, um, especially when people see characters like Bull Brandish jump from Undertakers, which is the, uh, the Atari-style game, and then all of a sudden he's this, you know, 50-something-year-old man, um, and he's this grizzled lumberjack, and then he has, like, massive, you know, attack stat in Gaiden Deathly Delusion Destroyers. I think, um, that's, I think that's something that, um, people enjoy, that they can see that their characters are being respected and treat, being treated, uh, well. Uh, Ro, it sucks because Rebecca was cool in the beginning of that movie. It's a fine line, though a video game with a thoughtful political message can also serve to be a good form of entertainment that leaves an impression on the consumer. Stefan, I agree. If I think if, if you have s something important and meaningful to bring to other people, then that's, that's important um, to be a secondary thing. That should not be the primary um, focus, because a video game is about entertainment. It's not about lecturing people. Uh, Ro then literally becomes waifu vessel. Ugh, yeah. There's a lot of dialogue in D3 that I would say lines up um, political things, but it's also a big reason why I cherish the game so much. 
Um, yeah, so I, you know, if people haven't played um, Gaiden Fides, or if they haven't and haven't gotten around to it yet, you know, there's there's obviously a, a, a story there that's um, important to these characters. There's there's something in, important going on um, with that character's life, but that's not uh, the intention of the game itself. The intention is not to lecture people, and it's not to tell people how to think. And I will never make a game that does that. Um, the story in Gaiden um, Deathly Delusion Destroyers is just, look, here's this guy. This is his life. This is This is what's going on. I don't tell anyone how to think about it, um, and it's not the core of that game. The game is meant to be entertaining and fun to people, and that was my absolute focus was, this has to be fun, and if it's not fun, I'm not going to do it. Uh, though part of its plot is that the presence of someone different shouldn't bring with it an arbitrary set of difficulties that you shouldn't be expected to face. Yeah, that makes sense. I think there's a big line between an inspired story that deals with social stories and just low effort, pol overly political nonsense. I hear you. I hear you. My least favorite thing anywhere in movies and shows and video games is this whole um, like the, the um, Ghostbusters 2016 was sort of the pinnacle of it was uh, oh yay um, um, women are so much better than men men suck, every man is awful every man is dumb and, and every woman is just the best woman ever and women are 100% are better than men at everything and men are morons um, so you don't you don't see the the bullying behavior that you're cultivating now, you don't see that you don't see a generation of, of males now growing up to feel inferior because of what you're saying. So I'm not a big fan of, of that mentality. Um, and I, I work really hard uh, to write characters and stories that combat that. Um, I don't want to have any kind of story that, that goes, ooh, one person's better than the other and the other person sucks. That's bullying. It doesn't matter if you're on Netflix or Hollywood. It doesn't matter if you had millions of dollars behind you. Your... I'm, I'm going to curse on my string here. Um, I try to maintain a professional attitude here. But you're an asshole. And you suck. Everything about you sucks if that's what you're creating. Um, there we go. Now my channel's no longer um, family friendly, I think. What am I talking about? There's way worse stuff than that in the games. <laughs> This guy's been dancing here the whole time. What do we got? What do we got? Um, Alorzo, Nintendo understands that people want to be entertained more than anything. Absolutely. And I, I agree with with um, their, their beliefs and their values. I think lineup. Um, and that's why I wanted to make these games for Nintendo consoles. It's just I, I agree with the way that they do business. Uh, and the way that they treat and respect people. Um, so having been able to work closely with Nintendo on these last games has it's been an absolute dream. I didn't think I would ever get to work with Nintendo like that. This is close to flossing. Is this it? I think this is the closest we're going to get. Um, uh, Raiko. Oh, Age of Calamity is really fun. It's they, they did improve the game with patches to improve the frame rate as well. Uh, Ro, games are also a really unique storytelling device because it is really an interactive sort of media. Absolutely, you get it, you understand it. Um, we have to contribute something as players, we have to contribute something to the game. Uh, and that's what makes us feel um, connected to what's happening. But it also gives us a chance to open our minds a bit to the content that's in the game because we are looking for information. We are looking to be told something. And I think that's why we really enjoy things like fantasy stories is we're we're open to this this information that's interesting and foreign and new to us and it's exciting to experience that in a game. Um, and I think many developers are are abusing that and they're taking advantage of that. And it's, they're using that interaction in a disrespectful way. That's something that I'm hyper aware of and I'm very careful when I'm planning my games. Reminds me of the Crash Bandicoot dance. Yep, big. I'm a big Crash guy here. Uh, do you like my Crash Bandicoot? 
Uh, I'd say two is my favorite. That's the one I grew up with, but you know, I really like three as well. Uh, there's a difference between awareness and bullying. Nowadays, it's just bullying and they throw it in, in your face. Yeah, and if, if you're putting someone down, that's bullying. Um, yeah, so the only way that I can, I can do anything about it, because I hate that, what's happening in, in our culture right now, the only way I can combat that is to try to write stories and make media that shares values that I think are important, and that's treating people as equals. Um, and trying to understand people. And we're not always going to get along with each, with each other. We all have different beliefs. Uh, we're probably going to hate each other's guts once in a while. But that doesn't change the fact that we still have to put in an effort to be understanding of other people and to try to accept that we are going to be different. We've, we've still got to try to get along, you know? Uh, and when someone's in need, you have to help them. It doesn't matter what your differences are. There we go, there's my, my ranting and, and my venting for the day. Uh, Gina Z, I think the core elements of any good character story, regardless of um, penchant and intention, is that the characters have to be what the story is about. Absolutely, Gina Z, it, it really irritates me when we get stories where the main character isn't even part of the story. You could change the main character and the story would be exactly the same. The character's personal um, growth, the personal issues, the personal struggles have nothing to do with the story, then why is that character the main character? You know. Uh, you have Age of Calamity, you just need the expansion pass. Oh, I need to get that. I need to get the expansion pass. I haven't finished Age of Calamity. Um, a friend got that for me and we were playing that uh, together. Uh, but our, our work schedules picked up uh, significantly, so we haven't been able to play through Age of Calamity. Uh, Gina Zay, you can't address that level of empathy if the character feels secondary to the intention of the writing. You uh, don't need to preach over your characters. Breed em empathy and relatability through them. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. Uh, love the classics, but Crash 4 has um, definitely become my favorite. Is So what's number four? Is number four officially Crash It's About Time? Is that one officially four? Um, Micah, um, your games also align with Nintendo's favor towards innovation in a gameplay sense. The other consoles always have the next big shooter, fighting game, story-driven experience, etc. Yeah, you get it. Like, I, I don't think the Silver Falls games fit well on other platforms. They don't align with um, what people expect with Xbox and Sony, and I don't think my beliefs align um, very closely with Sony and Xbox. I just want to make something fun, and I want to make weird stuff. I'm sure you guys have already figured it out. I, I like making experiences that are kind of, um, they're not standard, they're not formulaic, and they're, they're kind of weird because I think that's fun. My favorite era of gaming, I would probably say, is, is probably the PlayStation and N64 era because it was so experimental. We got so many weird, fun concepts, and every time I played a new game, my imagination would go crazy because I would experience this uh, game formula that hadn't been done before, and I thought, this is so neat. It's so weird. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and I, that's why I'm, I, I'm so passionate about that era of gaming. PlayStation 2 era, they dialed things down, and it was more about following formula, so games were less experimental when it came to PlayStation 2 and GameCube and, and um, you know, so. That's what I'm trying to, to do with my games, just something interesting and weird and fun. Alorzo, uh, yeah, I don't want to get too far into that. It makes me rage when I hear someone say all men are terrible. Yeah, yeah well, you know, you heard me just, just vent here. Uh, that is something that I, I feel very strongly about. It's bullying, and we can't let bullying uh, become acceptable in our culture. We've got to do something about it. How do you feel about publishing games on Steam? Lots of indie games there. Um, I don't think I would personally be able to do a, what's absolutely necessary uh, because people ex expect a certain level of quality on Steam and um, 
working on a PC platform has its own quirks and challenges. I already have a hard enough time working on Nintendo platforms because they have very specific development quirks and challenges. And if I were to start doing PC ports of my games, it would spread me too thin and it would make the PC games worse and it would make the Nintendo games worse. So I think it's important for me to focus on one platform. And at this point, Nintendo has really earned um, um, the Silver Fall series, like what they did to get the 3DS and Wii U games launched. The loyalty and support that Nintendo showed for the Silver Fall series, I, I can't betray that. Um, and so I, I want the Silver Falls to bring value to the Nintendo brand. I have other games, other IPs that I'm working on as well, like Animele. I'd be more than happy to bring that to um, other platforms and Steam as well. Uh, Micah, your games are so different from one another that if not for the branding of Silver Falls, you'd never guess they were made by the same dev developer or that they share a universe. I, I love the concept of that. I just think it's so much fun. And also I was, I am so aware of, of, of stagnation, you know, where we'll play our favorite game series and then they just, they have to elevate. If they are the same gameplay style, they have to elevate and escalate. And they have to do bigger and do more than what they did last time. And if if you do that, you're going to end up with a game like Resident Evil 6 where it's too much, it's too big, it's doing too much, it's escalated too far. Um, and I knew that was a real risk going in, which is why I wanted to create a series where every game is so different that it's about um, variety. Um, so, uh, yeah, as, as opposed to escalation. Uh, Ghoul Busters wouldn't have been successful on Xbox, uh, maybe on Sony. Uh, it just feels smooth on a Nintendo console, though. Hey, thanks for that. Um, yeah, and I, I was really concerned about doing Ghoul Busters because I know that it doesn't look visually uh, that eye-catching. Um, and Undertaker's has that same problem as well. I, Undertaker's is the least visually eye-catching game, but it's usually the one where people DM me after they've played it for a couple hours and they say, I was not expecting to like this game that much, but I really love it. And it's because, you know, you see the screenshots, you see videos and gameplay, it's not really engaging visually, but it's, it's, um, it's meant to lure you in with a false sense of, of, uh, rudimentary design. It's meant to look basic and simple, so that way you go into it not expecting um, what's going to happen. Um, and that was my form of, of storytelling, was that's what these characters are going through. Something shocking just happened, and they absolutely were not expecting that to happen. Um, and that's why I, I tried to keep it visually plain uh, and go with that Atari 2600 style. Uh, G.K. Chesterton uh, once said something along the lines of, uh, of a good story reveals the truth about its characters. A bad story reveals the truth about its writer. Ooh, that's very cool. I like that. And I I really hope that um, nothing I write ever reveals uh, the truth about me uh, because I would feel pretty, uh, pretty insecure. Um, I think people might find out how much, how many Cheetos I had to eat in order to survive the past 12 months of development. Uh, please don't look into that. It was a lot of, I had to eat a lot of snacks. Um, I, I, <laughs> in the Silver Falls games, uh, you could probably tell the developer really likes snacks because the, the majority of the items are snacks. Um, so that's, you know what, oh no, oh no, the games, the, the Silver Falls games did reveal something about <laughs> the creator. I love snacks. Um, but these days I'm, I'm, I've just started, uh, my daily, um, body conditioning again. So I'm back to physical training every day and back to my weights. I can only handle about 75% of my maximum weight right now because the past 12 months I had to forego my weight training. Um, no more Cheetos for me now, um, so I'm just sticking to health, healthy things like grapes, apples, bananas. So I'm back to a healthy diet, uh, back to daily weight training, and that way I can I can stay alive and I can keep making video games for you guys. Um, if I can be real, the biggest thing I feel in my attachment to the characters in Silver Falls is this sense of community, um, love and community. Wow, I'm really glad you appreciate that. You know, I, I wanted to make a series that people could see what they want to see in the games and they can uh, contribute their own values to the game. Because I feel like 
any sort of entertainment or media should be a two-way street. People should be able to contribute something. So what they see in in the game is is what they want to see. And I'm worried about hyper-realistic games that don't leave room for people to engage. I want there to be room for people to engage and add their input, because if they don't engage, you mentally just switch off. And all of these hyper-realistic games are just throwing these gorgeous, hyper-realistic visuals um, and, oh, these cinematic stories, and look at the, all this voice acting. But that 100% removes people's ability to add something of their own to the experience. And I think w that's... I think that's damaging overall to the, the game industry if that's the only kind of game we have because people can no longer engage on their own, own level. Um, uh, Gino's a uh, 3D summarized it the best when everyone with or in spite of Gus's concerns with how he feels about himself or he, his experiences want to help him because someone they know and care about is in trouble. Yeah, I was getting a little, I was honestly getting a little bit choked up a little bit. Um, that, that was the feeling that I wanted to tell with that story and that's why I chose Gus as the main character for that. And that's also why a few games leading up to Guide and Deathly Delusion Destroyers, um, I want to make sure that there are no formulas and no patterns in Silver Falls. Everything needs to feel fresh. But I purposefully had one formula that I was repeating because I wanted it to be um, a lead up, an organic lead up to, to Guide in 3Ds. And that the formula I was following was, someone's gone missing, let's go out and, and find them, and, you know, and in every situation, everyone in town, no questions asked, hey, let's band together, we've got to find this person, you know, in White Inside It's Umbra and, and Galaxy Bound Curse, um, and even to some extent in um, Guardians and Metal Exterminators. And so I purposefully had that formula repeat because I wanted people to have that in the back of their minds to think, oh, Silver Falls is, this is the formula. Someone goes missing and cool, a town, no questions asked, the town will just band together. They'll go on a search party. But um, in Gaiden 3Ds, I wanted to break that formula that I had, I had established on purpose. Um, so it feels a little shocking when you start the game and you go, oh, wait a second, this character's alone and he's not going to get people to help him. Uh, and that was part of the storytelling was to lead up to that through the other games. Uh, Gino say Undertaker's the goat. I, I have such a special spot um, in my heart for Undertaker's. I think it's, it's charming um, because it... I think I was able to be faithful in, in just the right ways, you know, like the unsettling silence and the only thing that you hear is your character's crunchy footsteps, you know, and there's no music because that's how it was with Atari 2600. You'd sort of sit there, you can hear the crickets chirping outside and all you hear is your character moving around the screen. Um, and it sort of, it opens you up because now you have to engage, you have to fill in the blanks. And that's, you know, I think I was really lucky that I, I got that right. I, it could have gone very wrong with Undertakers. Uh, Raiko, um, Ghoul Busters is one of the best games on 3DS. Um, wow, thanks. That's such a such an awesome compliment. I really appreciate that. That really means a lot because there's there's so many great games on the 3DS. How do you pick? You know, how do you pick? Um, I need to play Undertaker's on Wii U. LOL. I, people have told me that when they pl the people played it first on 3DS, then they played it on um, Wii U, and then they said it really felt like a real Atari game because it was on the TV, you know. So I think that's exciting to see it on the TV. You know, I, I grew up with the 2600. I loved it. Ah, um, uh, Alors, so my favorite snack um, in Silver Falls is NRG bar. Took me a bit to get the pun. Here's. Here's trivia for you. This is just for you guys in the chat. No one else gets to know this. NRG stands for Nutrient Rich Granola. NRG. So I didn't just pick NRG because it says energy. It actually has meaning. It's Nutrient Rich Granola. So Nutrient Rich Granola Bars, NRG Bar. There we go. Uh, dot com. Hey, it was great to hang out. Uh, take care, dot com. We'll see you next time. I'll probably see you in the, in the Discord if you're there. See ya. 
Uh, Raiko, I've honestly lost a lot of interest in AAA games outside Nintendo. I'm getting too old for all these 200-hour games. Gonna just stick with Nintendo now, since I love their IPs and Stone Falls too. Thanks. I honestly, I I feel really um, similarly. Is I'm I'm getting a little burned out on. Again, I don't have um, a PS5 or the new Xbox, partly because I. I can't keep track of which Xbox model is, is which. That makes me sound like someone's uncle. But the experiences on those games are not really what I'm looking for at this point in my life. They're, they're these big demanding, you know, look at this big cinematic thing, but I feel like I don't get to engage with those games. And that's where I'm coming from. But with Nintendo games, I don't have that problem. Nintendo understands that people need to engage with games and they need to contribute something. They need to fill in the blanks in their own way. And I feel like even though Nintendo games look gorgeous, you know, they're just these highly detailed, wonderful games, they understand the balance of, of allowing people to add something in, and engage in the experience. Uh, Uravity Jenny, hi, uh, thanks for coming to hang out on the stream. Uh, um, Hello there, this has been a relaxing stream. I received a code for Guide and Deathly Delusion Destroyers. Oh, I'm so glad I could get a code to you. I had I had so few to give out. Uh, I, I got around to playing the game and got a bit overwhelmed and wasn't sure where to start. Any tips? Um, yes, so on Guide and Deathly Delusion Destroyers, it's best to start during the daytime. Um, start during the daytime. I'll do a stream next time I'll play the game as well. Um, I think there's a starting guide. If you check my channel, I do have a starting guide on Gaiden uh, Deathly Delusion Destroyers, but play during the daytime, and when you open the campfire menu, uh, make sure you equip a weapon and armor. You start out with a bunch of stuff in your inventory, but they're not equipped. So if you equip your weapon and your armor, and buy a healing item, so you can give yourself a healing item, um, then go to the diner. If you wait around at the diner for a while, uh, Characters will show up, and if they talk to you, you will get stat boosts. You can probably collect like six stat boosts, and then go and do your first mission. Just pick a mission that looks, you know, they're all going to be easy uh, until you're, you're leveled up a bit. But as long as you give yourself weapons, give yourself a health item, uh, and then get some boosts from the diner, that will help you. So this is part of the organic storytelling that I was... Um, I, I always, always focus on organic storytelling. With Gaiden Deathly Delusion Destroyers, it feels impossible. When you only have Gus in your party, and when Gus is alone, that first battle feels basically impossible. And it feels like there's absolutely no way I can do this on my own. But you have to get through it. You have to get through that first battle. That was um, totally by intention. And that ties into Gus's story. As you go, go through the story of, of Gaiden Deathly Delusion Destroyers, and I don't want to spoil it because I know people haven't played through it yet, but that is entirely what the story is about, is when you're alone, it does feel impossible, and for many situations, things are impossible. So don't be alone. Don't try to do it all by yourself. Don't do it alone. Because even when you only have one character with you, um, or you know, when you have your first character join you, and you have Dodger join Gus, for Gaiden Deathly Delusion Destroyers, all of a sudden, it feels like, whoa, this isn't impossible. I, I can do this. It's not impossible anymore. And that feeling was so important to me that I, I really was trying to get that across to people. And that's why I made it so brutal when Gus is alone in that first battle. And I hope, I hope people um, don't get turned off from the game um, because of that first battle. But I was willing to take the risk, and that's the kind of storytelling that I want to focus on. And I know that no game developer in their right mind would do something that that risky and out of the ordinary, but for me, it's more important to share a feeling and to tell my stories through a feeling like that. Um, Gino Zay, um, you succeeded in spades. I really appreciate that. It really means a lot. Um, I felt truly a deep sense of lamentation and love in Gaiden. I still do running it today. Thank you. <laughs> it really means a lot to me um, because I have no idea whether or not people are going to like the things that I make. And I, I just want to make something good for you guys. That's all I want. Uh, 
Um, oh. Let me try to catch up with the chat here. Uh, Ro, to be fair, they started named the Xbox consoles like smartphone series, which is super confusing. Uh, yeah, I don't know which Xbox is which right now. I would have to look up a guide, which is not great. But I'm sure that if people were already into Xbox, it would make sense. They would already know it. You know, it wouldn't be a big deal to them. So. Well, let's listen to some forest music. Um, yeah, and just keep doing the easy missions. Once you have your party, um, you can refresh the missions hour, uh, as well. And just try and get equipment for your characters. Because once you start earning equipment, they'll be much better than the starting equipment in Gaiden 3Ds. A dream pillow. I think in the last few years there has been great revival of creative 3D platformers and cartoony games such as the new Ratchet and Clank and Psychonauts. Is that one good? Should I look that up? Um, I haven't seen any of the new ones. Um, I think uh, more fun either playing indie games like Hollow Live or going back to GBC or GBA games. I never played before then all hours playing Korean MMOs. Unfortunately modern games are more about um, like AAA games. They're more about um, manipulating and inconveniencing and really upsetting people to force them to spend money in-game. And our industry is leaning towards that more and more. I'm not happy about it. And that's why um, I'm, I want to push so hard with the code linker. That's my, my way to fight back against the modern um, attitude and trends in the game industry, is the code linker actively keeps giving you more. If you own other Silver Falls games, you're going to be rewarded for it. And even if you don't own the games, if you have a friend or know someone online, they can reward you with other content by code linking. That's why I wanted a system that didn't require you to own the game. Yeah. Variety is key. Both types of games need to exist. Absolutely, yeah. But recently we've had severe um, AAA bloat and it's giving a false impression of sameness to the majority of people. Yeah. Uh, when you're alone, it feels impossible, really does drag out some feelings. It does. You know, that's something I think everyone deals with at some point in their life. Um, and I thought an effective way to communicate that was um, the beginning of Gaiden 3D. I thought it was an opportunity to share a feeling. That's why Nintendo, as well as indie games, are important to the industry. Absolutely. It's about fun and it's about the experience. Uh, Aravity, uh, Jenna, uh, thank you so much for the tips. I noticed there was lots in my inventory, but didn't know it to begin with. There you go, yeah. Every character has only one weapon type they can equip. So they, they, they'll tell you. If you try to equip the wrong weapon, the character will tell you which type they want to. Um, uh, Aravity. Um, have I been saying Jenny or Jenna? I'm sorry if I've been saying Jenny. I'm, I'm sorry. It just rolled. I saw the Y in gravity. It just rolled off the tongue. Um, is is this a, a My Hero reference? I please let me know if it is or not. Uh, I really appreciate how you outlined your viewpoint when creating the story. It helps me uh, give me context when playing. Uh, T squared. I know that you are working hard on the Switch game, but any timelines for a GBC Color uh, DS? Or, and the old phone games, I want to have Duck Season launch about the same time as Face Takers. Um, there will be Code Linker content going into Face Takers, but there's no Code Linker content going out of Face Takers. And that's again for story reasons, is that no one escapes, no one gets away from the Face Takers. Um, I, I will have an update for, excuse me, sorry. I will have the update for Galaxy Bound Curse on the Game Boy Color. I'll, I would like to have that uh, later this year. Hopefully I will launch a GBC update when um, GBC DX on the Switch launches. Um, Duck Season, again, will be launching um, um, close to that. And for the Nokia game, uh, Silver Falls Pocket, if we're lucky, I might have that out by the end of the year. So uh, I just, I have to stay... Um, efficient and I have to keep working hard. This guy's having fun here. This guy, this guy knows where it's at. He's having fun. He's doing this now. 
He knows what's going on. Celeste was awesome. I played a bit of Celeste. It's really fantastic. Uh, Raiko, right, yeah, at the end of the day, I don't want to fiddle with dozens of settings. I just want to play a game. I, I've been off of um, PC games for a while because, I, yeah, I just want to play a game. I don't want to have to keep figuring out what settings work um, best for my, my, my PC, you know. That and my, my strong machine is my development machine, and I'm clinging on for dear life to any free space I can get on my hard drive. All of my space is taken up by development. Uh, software and my game projects, which are massive, you know, they're they're gigs upon gigs. So I actually don't even have space to install PC games. <laughs> Rose Salmon looks at level ten snake shotgun. Maverick only feels like using heavy melee. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's the struggle we all face in Gaiden 3D's. Um, uh, Aravity, Jenna, it's to it's, it actually, it is actually a My Hero reference. I'm a big My Hero fan. Uh, I really like, um, oh man, what, what's Shadow Chicken's name? I call him Shadow Chicken. I, obviously he has a name. Um, I never bother to remember it because I want to call him Shadow Chicken. Um, I really like his powers. I think they're super cool. They remind me a little bit of Naruto and his, his, um, demon fox. T squared, um. Uh, thanks for the update, enjoying my time in Silver Falls. I thank you for playing and enjoying the games. And again, I'm working on updates, so I want to get the updates out to you. I want to make free games as well. It's just fun. It's a cool way to, to do um, experimental stuff and, and show you guys that I appreciate all your support. Um, duck season, rabbit season. People said I should do a rabbit season, which would be pretty funny. There are rabbits in Silver Falls, you know, so... One of the more interesting things with Nintendo's eShop is they sort of um, just dump everything on the front page, which is great because it means little indies can get on the front page. Oh, that's cool. Right. I don't open the eShop that often. But it also means you get to see, like, hentai games next to Yoshi's Cookie. Everybody likes something different. Everyone likes something different. It's just that my kid nephew might open the eShop, <laughs> and I don't... I don't want him seeing stuff like that on my Nintendo, you know? <laughs> Tokoyami. Ah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Tokoyami. I, I remember that because it kind of sounds like Okonomiyaki, uh, which I'm a big fan of. Um, delicious. A friend of mine makes incredible Okonomiyaki. Um, sometimes I'll invite him over and I'll just try to trick him into making some Okonomiyaki for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding about that. <laughs> Uh, she say, I love heroes that generally just want to be the symbol of hope for people. It hits me where I live. Um, you stand the hell out of all my... Yeah, it's it's fun. I enjoy my hero. I'm catching up. Please, no spoilers. I haven't been able to watch it because I've been working. I'm, I'm just watching the end of season four now, so please, no spoilers. Um, T-Squared, going to try Prelude tonight. Thanks for that. I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you need any help, you can ask on um, the Discord. I am working on an update uh, for Prelude. Um, the Unity game engine was pretty broken um, for that release, so there's a couple of glitches, there's weird visual stuff, but you can totally play through the game, but the, there is an update coming that's going to have massive improvements. I wrote the salmon. Uh, no dig against the hentai crows, but um, like, yeah, we got my partner's nieces some games, and they do have to open eShop for DLC sometimes. Yeah, that's that's my only complaint is ooh, my kid my kid nephew might open that, you know? Ooh. Haven't caught up with the, the newest season of My Hero or the more recent manga. I should probably get on that. I haven't read the manga. I haven't had time. Um, I haven't had read any of the My Hero manga. Uh, I I think I, I'm kind of burned out on manga after reading I used to read Bleach and Naruto Weekly, and they got really awful. Um, they were just like, you can tell that the writers were exhausted and they didn't want to keep doing it anymore. And you would, in Bleach, you would get entire pages of just like a blank thing, and it's like, bakum, you know, there's an explosion. Like, you spent two whole pages on that? 
it's clear the writers were just exhausted. So, um, and Naruto, I can't tell you what happened at the end of Naruto. For the last eight years of Naruto, I can't tell you what happened. So I think I was burned out on, on manga and I don't want to read it anymore because of those two. You can play as All Might in Fortnite? That's kind of cool, actually. You've only read the My Hero manga, never watched the anime. Um, oh, really? Okay. Krakum. I like Bakum. I think Bakum is... Um, I think I first saw that in Dragon Ball Z, and I thought that was a very cool automatopoeia, the, the DBZ anime I, is where I saw Bakum. And ever since then, I've been obsessed with the idea of Bakum, you know? There's no option to hide games above a certain rating on the eShop. It seems like it'd be an obvious parental controls option. You're right. You'd think it would. Iwata was very open for M-rated games, not just Nintendo games themselves. You guys want to see something HD? All right. I'm going to... I'll open something up here. I'm going to open something up. Since, since we're on the subject here. And this is, you know, like, you know, Nintendo gets me. Nintendo gets me. I'm going to open something. If you give me a moment before we wrap the stream, I'll open this up and I'll share it with you. Oops. I hope nobody, nobody read what's on here. I don't think I can hide this. So, um, nobody, nobody read this, please. Hold on. We have to, we have to click in place, I think. Oh, nobody look. Nobody look. There we go. You're thinking Yamauchi. He was against Conker's Bad Fur Day. Fortnite is pop culture at this point. Yeah, it's pretty popular. Um, this is gonna. Yeah, good. Good glutes. Good glutes. Good workout. I actually really like this one. Hey, let's do the wave. We're not going to we're not going to think of him the same way when we see him in Face Takers. I think I think we're all just going to be thinking of this is what I'm I'm imagining. I'm just opening up a project. I'm going to share some behind the scenes stuff and a, and a look with you guys. I'll be a monster doing the can can. Yeah. Um and that's what's great about Mixamo is you go from T-pose to these cool dances and you have a bunch of fun stuff built in there. Hit the gritty with a black manta after I blow up Wolverine and Kid Leroy with Easter eggs only to get sniped by Vegeta. That's that's fun. Look, it's fun. People are enjoying it. It's hilarious. I can see how people would, you know, kind of be mean spirited about it. like, oh, that's my character. I don't want to see them fighting Minecraft Steve. You like Smash Bros, don't you? <laughs> this is peak gaming. It's that fool who styled on my last camper. Get him. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine this guy kills your kills your previous camper and face takers, takes your camper's face, and then is doing this. He's that's like his teabagging. He's teabagging over your your dead camper. I'm trying to move this to a different screen here. Okay, we're gonna move that, move that to a different screen. All right, okay. All right, I'm gonna open up something in three down stars here. I want an optional unlock for this game. Who knows? Who knows what kind of cheat codes will show up? What if the enemies approach you like this? There's a great gif of Chun Li using a Tommy gun to take out Ryu in Fortnite. And all the comments are all FGC community in jokes. One day I'll do the Numa Numa dance as Maverick on top of Tilted Towers. Look, if if Fortnite Silver Falls is 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 a pretty small property, you know, we're not mainstream. We're pretty we're pretty pretty um, pretty small. Pretty small. I wouldn't say that Fortnite would we would never register on on Fortnite's radar. It would never happen. Just like we're, we're probably never going to register on the Smash Bros. radar. But if Fortnite asked if, if, if that, you know, if they wanted, you know, to put Maverick in there, I would do it. Uh, 
only for for you guys because i know that some of you like fortnite so i'd say yes i mean it's never going to happen because we're we're so small we'll never register on on fortnite's um, radar but I, I would say yes for you guys okay okay let me see here all right let me let me bring this in here so i'm done with my drawing tab i'm gonna get this out of the way here and before we wrap up the stream so we were talking you know like mature and m-rated games silver falls is um three down stars is rated mature so again i it, it was a nightmare actually working um in unity 3ds because when i baked my light maps they have to be baked like this they look pitch black so i couldn't tell what my games looked like I could not tell what my interiors looked like when I'm working in Unity. It is a nightmare. You guys cannot imagine what a horrible process it was. This is what it looked like when I was building Three Down Stars in Unity 3DS. This was this is half of the nightmare. This isn't even half of half of the nightmare. Okay, so I'm just going to turn off uh, my my lighting data here, so we can get an idea of what. Um, Somebody asked me. Um... Okay, it's not turning off. That's fine. Somebody asked me what, um, why the game is rated. Um, I think it's rated M for mature, um, and it is because there's some nudity in the games. And it again, um, it was it's something that people DM'd and they laughed about. Um, I turn the lighting off. Yeah. So it's something that people DM'd and they laughed about and they said, oh man, what a funny set piece. Um, but I did it because it was it was part of the storytelling um, and it was part of um, a feeling that I was sharing with people. So this is a, one of the motel rooms in Three Down Stars and it's the reason why the game has a mature rating. Well, there's, there's other stuff in the game as well, you know. But you go in here and there's a character that's P. And if you aim the character just, aim the camera just right, it's not censored. There's no censoring in Silver Falls. And it, it sets an absolute tone that this game isn't going to hold its punches and it's not going to mess around. Hold on. There we go. So programmatically, I actually have this simulate for like three, three, four, three or three, uh, three or four frames and then it, it pauses the simulation. And that's how you get the frozen um, E stream. So yeah, that's, that's why the game has a mature rating whatever it is and that's um i wasn't gonna pull my punches and the idea of it is that characters comment on it like if you if you uh oh is this video gonna get censored by youtube yeah who cares um no so three down stars was m-rated and when it's when it's on the a switch it'll have the same rating because there was, will still be um, stream on stream and there'll still be a uh, nudity in three down stars and that's because if you if this was real if people were frozen in time you are going to run into people that are in the bathroom there's no avoiding that um, you run into people that are in the middle of, of private things um, and to sanitize it and to say oh no there you're, you're not going to see anyone that that betrays that sense of of believability and reality and to me, that's that was a moment that uh, I put it in there to catch people off guard, and it was sort of a moment where where I wanted the player to think, "Oh, crap! Okay, so anything anything can actually happen in this game." I just walked into a dude and I saw his, I saw him peeing. Um, it makes you feel like anything could happen, and that was an extremely important feeling to get across with Three Down Stars. If you sanitize your game, um, if you hide things like that, it no longer has that. A visceral bite to it and viscerality is extremely important to me when it comes to the feeling that people uh, experience with the game so I was I was willing to take the M rating uh, for that because it's important that these games have that feeling that they don't muck around um, they don't they're not going to sanitize they're not going to cleanse things they're not going to you know um, make things safe for babies um, this is real um, this is something that could actually happen and people are meant to feel bad I wanted people that walked into that room to feel a little guilty and go, oh crap, I, I wasn't supposed to see that. Um, there's a sense of voyeurism that feels wrong. 
And that was very important to Three Down Stars. It is absolutely important. And it also is a part of storytelling and it expresses why only certain characters in Silver Falls were able to uh, basically be awake while everyone else is frozen, is that small room was a significant hint. Uh, and the characters say, oh man, I'm glad I wasn't frozen with some pervert running around. That's the reason why only these specific characters can move around in town. It's because they would not abuse the privilege of, of being awake while everyone was frozen. That's why Holt, Annalise, uh, Moss, and the other characters, why they were able to move while everyone was frozen. And that, that was an important part of the story, so I wasn't going to sanitize it. Anyway, um, all right, I'll just... I'll just uh, catch up with the chat. Oh, it's almost been five hours. Wow. Hey, it's been really fun hanging out with all of you and chatting. It's been so cool. Um, um, uh, Gino say, also the Naruto, I may be out of chakra raises pistol, but I'm not out of options. That's pretty funny. Um, how did to not go insane working with Unity? I think I did, Alorzo. I think I did go insane working on Unity 3DS, but it's over. It's over. I don't have to work on UD 3DS anymore. We all had our bonfire together. We had fun. We had a laugh. We let it go. No more Unity 3DS for me. Uh, Lorzo, I remember running across this. Got a laugh out of me. <laughs> um, Gino Zay, um, I've been saying that for years. If you sanitize or undercut your horror, it's not going to feel un um uncomfortable horror should be uncomfortable discomfort is the start of dread yeah you're right absolutely you cannot afford to sanitize your your product your your story whatever you're creating especially if it's horror related horror focused or horror adjacent and again it's all about setting up a feeling for the player if you keep things clean people will feel safe um, and that scene was meant to disarm people and it all leads up every feeling that people um experience of three down stars was very um bespoke um like i wanted people to feel especially with Annalise's section i wanted people to feel lost and frustrated um i wanted there to, to be a sense of relief when you got into the mines and it was a small area um, and you felt like oh good finally okay i don't have this massive area to explore and then very quickly that sense of relief is taken away um i don't want to spoil the game for anyone um, you know, but you, you hear a sound and the, I spent the entire game up to that point convincing people there were no monsters, there's only animals. You only have to deal with animals. Um, and then something happens in the mines and yeah, a lot of people DM'd me and they were like, oh God, why did you do that? You know, and they said it was a very effective, um, you know, reveal. Uh, and then you have, you have that which leads directly into the still meal, uh, the steel mill. Uh, and then that just, the idea of, uh-oh, anything could actually happen at this point. You get to the steel mill and you think, oh god, I'm not ready, I'm not ready for what's happening right now, because it just drops it on you. Um, and that was something that I I really hope to pre people appreciated, because it, it took so much deliberate um, uh, discipline from me as a developer to to build up to that, as opposed to just dropping it on your head. Um, behind the scenes game development gone sexual. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, the minds freak me out. Well played. Yeah. So um, thanks for hanging out, everyone. It's been awesome. It's been so cool. I really enjoy chatting with everyone. Okay. I think I'm going to go make myself some lunch. I can't believe it's, it's 2 p.m. here in Australia. I had an awesome time. Uh, take care, everyone. I need, to, I need to now rig these guys. I got to rig this guy up. I'll finish painting him. I'll rig him up. So take care, everyone. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. And um, yeah, the posters look good. The posters looked all right. So uh, take care. Uh, we'll see it. Whoa, I accidentally figured out a button. Pressing tab in Sculptress hides, hides that, which is pretty rad. I like that very much. So I'll remember that. <laughs> it's been fun. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Techno Jade, Gino Zay, uh, Green Knight, uh, Raiko, Alorzo, Dream Pillet, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. You look forward to your Maverick mug this week. Hey, then we can we can share a, a cup of coffee together. <laughs> See you, everyone. Um, 
I'm taking a break from the Discord. I'll be back in a couple days. I just want to look. I want to look away from from LCD screens as much as I can. T squared. Take care. Good night, everyone. I'll see you around. Thanks again, everyone.